presentation of TNN Motorsports. The carnival has moved from Daytona to Rockingham, and you are smack dab in the middle of it, as thousands of race fans have gathered at the North Carolina Motor Speedway. Always among the most loyal are Dale Earnhardt's fans. They are smiling as broadly as possible. They're wearing their colors proudly. Why? Because their man is back in the high life again. It's a storied 20-year career that has seen many lasting images. For Dale Earnhardt, a 59-race winless streak ended by finally achieving a lifelong dream. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500. historic eighth NASCAR Winston Cup championship. And his quest continues today at The Rock. to share in NASCAR's 50th anniversary and is proud to present the 33rd annual GM Goodwrench Service Plus 400 today live from the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. So many storylines to choose from. Here are just some we'll be covering today. Only the top 31 drivers were lucky enough to draw a pit stall on the front straightaway. Names like Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, all pitting on the back stretch. What will that mean? One week ago, Kenny Wallace and David Green watched the telecast of the Daytona 500 from home. Today, they start second and third. And then there's Pontiac, having won 10 of the last 20 races here. But with new rule changes, what will that mean to Pontiac? Let's start at the top of the list. Those who are pitting on the back straightaway, some huge names in there, Glenn Jarrett, including that of your brother Dale. He's got his work cut out for him today. Oh, you're exactly right, Eli. They all do. You know, first and second in the Daytona 500 doesn't mean a thing here at Rockingham. As you've already mentioned, Dale Earnhardt, Bobby Labonte, two of the cars that are back here, along with Dale Jarrett, uh, Derek Cope, Ernie Irvin, Bobby Hamilton, really good race cars back here. The problem they face, when the pace car drops the lead cars off and they go into pits on the front stretch, they have to follow the pace car all the way around the racetrack before they can start down pit road back here. Now, he'll speed up a little bit, maybe as much as 10 miles an hour. That will help them. If they pit under green, that's a much tougher turn, harder, sharper turn coming off the racetrack under speed than it is getting into the pits on the front stretch. They got, got their work cut out for them back here, but every man to, a, to the last one back here believes that they can win from the back stretch. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Glenn, it's Rockingham resurgence for a host of teams who found doom and gloom in Daytona. Both David Green and Kenny Wallace failed to make the 500, but rebounded here at the Rock, starting third and outside pole. At the point, after a 67-race winless drought for the pole, is Rick Mast. Rick, three times you started on the pole, three times you failed to make it past lap two. Is today the day good luck finally shines? I believe so. You know what I mean? They did that number deal last week with Earnhardt. You're nine. Divided by three makes three and all that stuff. I don't I didn't understand all that, but we're doing the letter deal here. Rock and Rick from Rock Bridge at the Rock. We're going to do it. I think we'll be okay. Uh, my car, it seems like it takes about 10 laps to get going. After that, it, it runs real good. So, you know, I kind of got to love, hate affair at this place. 
I love it. We've run good. I hate it, and it's not let me finish well. So uh, maybe today's our day. If not, what we're want, what we're really wanting to do, we're wanting to get to Atlanta, leave Atlanta, being in the top 25 in points, so we can get off this qualifying pressure run a little bit. But you know, Remington's behind us and all that, so it's a good deal. Well, good luck. Now let's go to Steve Burns. Matt, Eli talked about the rules changes. Let's call it the five and five effective today. For the Fords and Chevrolets, the rear spoiler has to be five inches off the back of the deck lid. On the front, the front air dam must be five inches from the pavement to the top of the air dam. Now, what does this all mean? Let's make this simple. It means less spoiler and more front air dam. That's going to slow these cars down in the corners. The theory is that it will put the race back in the driver's hands, putting a premium on the drivers. Now, the Pontiacs, it's about the same, a couple eighths of an inch either way. One of the best Pontiac racers here is Kyle Petty. He's got three wins and five poles, but today you start 25th. Now, what does all that stuff mean? Can you get to the front? Yeah, especially at a place like Rockingham. Uh, this place has been good to Pontiacs. You know, what does it all mean? I don't think any of us knows. I think the guys in the Tauruses, the guys in the Chevys, and I know us in the Pontiacs are trying to figure out what the five and five rule is going to do to the cars. Hopefully it is going to put some of, uh, some of the drivability back in the driver's hands and at places like Atlanta and, and Vegas where we're going, it's going to slow the corner speeds down. So it was a necessary rule change and I applaud NASCAR for making it. All right, best of luck. Let's go back up to Eli. Steve, thank you very much, and welcome again to Rockingham, everyone, with Dick Bergman and Buddy Baker. I'm Eli Gold. When we last left you in Phoenix near the end of last year, remember that nice powder blue $8 hat that Dick Bergman used to have? It's been a prosperous off-season. He has upgraded to the $30 suede issue, so congratulations on that, sir. But let's talk racing. What's the big story as you see it today? Tire management, I think, is going to be the big story today, Eli. This racetrack is exceptionally abrasive, so much so that it absolutely tears at the tires. Yesterday, they ran a Bush Grand National race, and this is some of what used to be on the surface of the tires. Just tore it loose and wound up on the bottom of turn four, where I picked it up this morning. Now, as the racetrack tears away at the tires, the tires lose their grip, the car slows down. That's not what the crews want. So the crews have outfitted these race cars with softer springs, lower air pressure, special shock absorbers that'll help but the major responsibility for tire management rests with the drivers you know about that buddy baker he sure does well, well the basics you have to remember it's easy to overdrive the car here if you run in the corner too hard get the back in the slide and it loses grip it starts tearing the tires apart you have to run the accelerator like you have an egg under the accelerator right up here it's the key to the day being smart keeping the tires under the car you can hear in the background they have fired the engine so we are set to go racing when we come back the starting lineup and the green flag race number two of the season it's live on tnn TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Good Wrench Service Plus 400 is brought to you by Texaco, a world of energy. By the more than 1,750 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By First Plus Financial. At First Plus, we're working first for you. And by Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. The Rock, playing host to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series on this somewhat overcast and uh, cloudy, bit of a chilly afternoon here at Rockingham. Let's take a look at the Duraloop starting grid. And guys, how about it? Rick Mast, he has had such a run of bad luck. Kenny Wallace, he was home last week, didn't make the Daytona 500. David Green will start third. He didn't make the 500. Four guys in the top 10 qualifiers today, as you take a look at the starting lineup, did not qualify for the Daytona 500. Yeah, and the first and second place finishers in the Daytona 500 had to make today's field using provisionals there in the back pit. Well, you got to think about Rick Mast. He come very close to winning this race last year. Had engine problems near the end of the race. So, look for him to be a factor all day. There's Dick Trickle. He finished fifth here a year ago, if you remember. That's row number nine, Joe Nimichek and Mike Skinner, who was eighth at Daytona a week ago. There's the rookie, Steve Park, alongside veteran Jeff Bodine. He has had a second place finish here. Terry Labonte, Ricky Craven, he's always in the top five here at Rockingham. Led the most laps here last fall. Kyle Petty's Pontiac, Robert Presley, 
Sterling Marlin in the reunited and it feels so good tour with Tony Glover again as his crew chief. He runs well here and they'll be tough today, no doubt about that. There you see Jerry Nadeau, another of the standout rookies for 1998. Dale Earnhardt, he'll start back in the field and fit on the back straightaway. So will all these other big names that you see right here. Lake Speed, Chad Little had a fine speed weeks. And there is DW on the past champion's provisional starting spot. Now the AutoZone race analysis. This racetrack measures 1.017 miles around, hence 393 laps for the 400-mile distance. The Ford track description. See, the turns are not symmetrical, banked a bit differently. Back straight away, 1,367 feet. First cup race in 65, but again, it's been a few years now since they last repaved the racetrack. And that'll be a story as we watch that tire management that Dick and Buddy talked about earlier today. And I always remember to turn two over there. That is the most difficult part of the Rockingham Speedway. Now let's take you around with the in-car cameras, the roof cam, and a big thank you to Paul Boykin and all the guys at Boykin and Associates doing a great job all week building those new mounts for these roof cams that have returned to NASCAR racing, effective with the start of the 98 season. Ted Musgrave from 11th spot. Further back, Bobby Labonte from the back of the field in 38th. There you see Kyle Petty carrying the Tabasco in-car camera. And Ricky Craven as well on board with the Budweiser team. Back down to pit road, Glenn Jarrett before the start. Eli, we talked about the disadvantages of being on the backstretch pits. There are a couple of advantages. One, there's less traffic back here, far less uh, opportunity to get involved in a crash on pit road like we saw at Daytona. Second, the fuel pumps are right here at the pit, so they don't have near as far for the guys carrying the fuel runners to carry fuel. Here's Matt. Last week, Bobby Labonte finished second. Today, he starts 38. They spent all day Friday chasing a fuel pickup problem. They finally found it Saturday afternoon. They know they have a good car today. It's nicknamed Happy Gilmore. Bobby told me he hopes it'll make him happy one more time with a victory today. Steve Burns. Matt Jack Roush has five cars in this race today. Three of them are pitting right next to each other. Mark Martin, Johnny Benson, and Ted Musgrave. We'll see if they work together. And right now, let's go green. Jimmy Howell is atop the flag stand today. Again this year, he and Rodney Wise alternating as chief starters for NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. The crowd is juiced. They're fired up. We are going green here at the Rock. in 77 there on the outside the groove is already moving up just a little bit uh, this is a fast racetrack the preferred line in the early goings is right around that white line right around the bottom of the racetrack the 50 of ricky craven that red machine you saw middle of the field at 21st as we go back up front with rick mass kenny wallace is in second david green who still has never finished in the top 15 in an NASCAR Winston Cup race. This is his 27th career start. Maybe today is finally the day, because he's a much better driver than those kind of numbers would indicate. Look at that big pack of traffic midway through. That's 19th on back. It'll be interesting to see these three rabbits out front who have never won a Winston Cup race. See if they're going to try to run away with this thing. If they do, they may well burn the tires off their cars trying to gain some ground on the veterans who are behind them being a little bit more conservative in the early going. Six of the top ten starters today have not won an NASCAR Winston Cup race. You can see Terry Labonte, the five car there, jumping around on the bottom side of uh, Sterling Marlin in the 40th. Right at 
But at this point, what people are doing is really getting the car sorted out. They're talking to the pit crew saying, hey, the car is doing so and so and so and so. They clear some of the rubber belt up that you talked about earlier in the show. You get all those shavings up on the high side and you get into it early in the race, it can spin you out. Now, Bobby Hamilton, he drives the four. Ricky Rudd there, you saw the tide colors to the inside of Hamilton. That's 28th and 29th spot. Battling through turn two. Jerry Nadeau now going way high and backpedaling from 32nd spot, 32nd spot back towards the end of the field. Talked about tires. Goodyear has introduced a completely new Goodyear Eagle recommendation, a brand new tire for this weekend's activities. They're picking up the throttle very easy, not jumping back into it, keeping those rear wheels looked up. Battle for the lead now. Kenny Wallace drawing near. Had an idea coming off turn number four, but no need to push it here this early. Lap number six. Kenny Wallace seems to be able to run just a little bit lower up out of the corner. You see him making the move on Rick Mast. Rat Mast will fight back on the outside, but he ought to be able to make the move going into turn one. They'll run basically side by side down the front straightaway when they go into turn one. I think Mast will fall back just a little bit. Now that time, Mast still leads it back to the stripe. So much for what I thought. They're still side by side down the back straightaway. This is a good race. This is kind of fun to watch. These two guys pitted side by side. They had the garages, one right next to the other, so they had a good chance to look over and see what each other has been doing all week long. Man, they're running awful hard for this early in the race. The fourth car there, Jeff Gordon, you can see. He's really dialed in well on the bottom part of the racetrack, but he's got company. Jeremy Mayfield has been the talk of the town for the past two weeks. Sure. As well he should be. He went, into yeah, he went into 1997 with only three top tens in his whole career. He picked up eight more. Then he goes to the Daytona 500, gets his career best ever finish, and he's got his career best ever start here in Rockingham. He is on a roll in that number 12 car. And give him fourth place right there. He grabs it away from Jeff Gordon. In the early stages here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham, 10 laps in. Rick Mast has led them all as you ride with Mark Martin. Car number six is currently six. a bit of a higher groove there through the corner is Rick Mast and all the others but it's paying off here in the early going everybody's settling in for an afternoon of racing at the rock stay with us here on TNN it is your personal source for all things country country.com at that computer address you see on the screen that's where you'll find all the doings from TNN motorsports and otherwise country.com and don't forget folks at the rockingham 98.com location you've got our in-car cameras today and how about that question just came in on the internet buddy you are just named one of nascar's 50 greatest drivers what is your greatest memory of rockingham survival first off but <laughs> <laughs> no i love to run here I, I always felt that it was a racetrack that you could put a little extra driving skill into and make positions and i love those type of racetracks three second place finishes for Buddy in his career. Let's go to a six-car battle now that is being uh, involving these machines right here. You've got Musgrave. Now you're riding with Ricky Craven. That battle is for 11th, 12th, and so on. Hey, Rusty Wallace back in that mix there in 10th. He's backslid a little bit. Well, he has actually started pushing pretty much off the corner. And you can uh, just see right there, he's losing another spot right now as Jeff Burton goes by him going into turn three. Again, this is for 10. It's a long day. They'll get that number two car dialed in. He did some testing here with the new spoiler and air dam rules. And he did bonsai runs, also did long runs. They'll get it right. Eli, I see that uh, Ricky Craven in the 50 car there. You remember what a great run he had here last year. He's moving to the front right now. Same Ricky car. Craven, yes. Exact same car he had here in the past. 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year. All third place finishes. Those career bests that he 
Bucks had, including the run here at Rockingham. See Craven looking to the inside. Rusty right now is hanging on and hoping for a pit stop pretty soon so he can adjust on the car. You can see he does not have the drive up out of the corner that he needs. Craven going for 11th in the 50 machine. Changing, if you're not familiar, from number 25 to number 50 in honor of NASCAR's 50th anniversary. The Sitco colors right behind the number 21 for Michael Waltrip. Steve Burns has been hanging out on the Budweiser pit. Steve? Eli just talked to Tony Fur, the crew chief, and asked him what changes they've made this morning to make that car good up to the pack. He said they changed four shocks, two springs, and a sway bar. That's pretty significant. It really is. And, of course, the day has changed, too. When we left the hotel this morning at 7 a.m., it was bright sunshine, not particularly warm, but certainly bright sunshine. Now the overcast has moved in. Did, did you see that uh -huh. slide job just then? Ricky Craven went in there and just put a slide job like he's on a half-mile dirt to get by Rusty. That's how Rusty is trying to hold back on, on the brake getting in the corner because the car won't turn for him. But remember, Rusty Wallace has five wins here, eight top fives, 13 top tens. Uh, he knows how to run this track, and he's not going to win here at lap 25. Well, but Craven's got a lot of confidence here as well. Of his four top fives last year, two of them came right here at Rockingham, led the most laps in the fall race. He's led the five last five Bush Grand National races he has run here in a row, led all five of them. He's got probably more confidence here at Rockingham than any other racetrack on the circuit. Yeah, three top five finishes here in seven visits. Tough to beat those kind of numbers. Now, that was Ted Musgraves as you were riding down the front straightaway there, the 16 car just down the in-car camera. You could tell he was gaining up on the car in front of him there, which is Rusty Wallace, just a little bit. There's Jeff Gordon in the 24. Johnny Benson just went by him, so they're swapping around a bit. Benson now in fourth, Gordon in fifth. Johnny Benson, another of those who missed the Daytona 500 a weekend ago. Remember the 43 now, John Andretti. There's Mark Martin in car number six. We're riding with him. Mark's in eighth position now. And that's 18th place right there. Robert Presley, Ward Burton, Bobby Hamilton, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Glenn Jarrett, he's on the back pit area. Obviously, no stops yet, Glenn. Well, no, Eli, there's a couple of guys that are from back here that are doing pretty well. Bobby Hamilton has moved way up in the field. By my last count, he was up in 18th, maybe even better now. Uh, Dale Jarrett has moved up to 22nd. Bobby likes his car. Dale says his car's a little loose. Meanwhile, Earnhardt hadn't said anything yet. He has moved up to 28. Bobby Labonte seems to be the one fairing the worst. His car has a really bad push in it in the center of the corner, which then makes it loose off the corner. He's way back at 39th position. Working lap number 30. A total of 393 make up the distance today, and that's the man who's been going from the butt pole, and he hasn't been touched yet. Rick Mass leads by 7 tenths of a second. Drivers, race teams, and race fans. The 1998 Team Simpson Racing Catalog is now available. For more information, call 1-800-71-RACING or visit the Simpson website at simpsonraceproducts.com and join Team Simpson today. We are back with you live at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. There's the interval. That is what one and one-tenth seconds looks like on the racetrack between Rick Mast and the second-place runner, Kenny Wallace. Let's get an update on those guys to pit road, Matt. Eli up and down pit road. Three shoes keep reminding their drivers. Controlled aggression. we got to save those tires. Most teams want to go to around lap 72, trying to stretch it to around 70 to 72. Kenny Wallace says his car is getting big-time loose. To move up top, following Rick Mass. Mass is his car. Got a little loose after 30 laps. He's going to try to adjust the track bar on the first pit stop. Now, buddy, obviously a lot of fans who are watching today are veteran NASCAR fans. But in light of the thrilling doings at Daytona last weekend, I dare say there are some new fans who have decided to try and sample NASCAR again to see what it's all about. Let's talk about loose and push for the new fans. A lot of folks know about it, but many, I'm sure, don't. Well, it's real simple to explain. When you talk about push, you lose uh, the traction on the front tires, and when
when you lose the rear tires are sliding. That's the basic thing. Or as Neil Bonnet used to say, when you're pushing, you see the wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, Neil Bonnet. He won this race, if you remember. We've talked so much about the back pits. Neil Bonnet won this race in 1988 from 30th starting spot and a backstretch pit stall. And here's one of the guys right there, the three, Dale Earnhardt, working off the back pits. And again, no stops have been made yet, but he's already up to 25th and is threatening to get around his, his, the car that he and his wife own, Steve Park, and try and move past him into 24th. Good second place battle now. Kenny Wallace goes high. Johnny Benson says cheerio. And Johnny goes right Benson. by. Wow, what great rip up off the corner. You see, uh, Wallace never even put up a battle there. Johnny Benson misses the race in Daytona. Comes back with a great run today. That's got to make the sponsors feel good, but especially Johnny Benson. And again, across the top of the screen, you see that scoring rundown. MCI presenting the NASCAR timing and scoring for you here this afternoon as we keep you appraised of where your favorite driver is running here. Still early, obviously. You see 355 laps remaining here at Rockingham. As we look at Johnny Benson in that number 26 car currently running in second position, let's remember that is a brand new team headed up by Steve Meal, who used to be the crew chief for Mark Martin. He's been shuffled over to Benson, and a lot of people think that could be one of the toughest teams on the circuit this year. Mark Martin on a steady run towards the front. He just got by Jeff Gordon a lot before. You can see him coming up out of the corner there. Very smooth. That's Jeff Gordon just behind him. John Andretti in the third car back there. So Mark Martin with that move, grabs fifth with Gordon back into the sixth spot. You know, you talk about new teams. I think one of the classic stories was Steve Park, the Ray Bestis Rookie of the Year candidate. This year down at Daytona, they were in the process of moving into their new shop. They didn't get that done. I was talking to Philippe Lopez, the crew chief down in Daytona, and they were literally unwrapping the tools. I mean, they had their pit tools still in the plastic bags, the way they were shipped from the, sh from the manufacturer. And, you know, that is a new team. <laughs> Eli, I tell you, Johnny Benson is running like crazy. When we come back, we're going to join this battle. It had been one and a tenth seconds. It's now still one and a tenth. But it's Johnny Benson who now has second spot ahead of Kenny Wallace. The way Buddy Baker drew it up. They waited till we came back, and now the battle is on for the lead. But, hey, Johnny Benson in the 26 could not make the move. But now his mask goes high and opens the inside. Great forward bite up out of the corner there for Johnny Benson. They're side by side as they go down in turn one. I think Benson has a superior car right now on the bottom groove. We're at lap 48. Mast has been consistently running upstairs. That leaves the bottom wide open. Benson handling especially well on the bottom, but now he falls back a couple of car lengths. But watch off the corner. He'll pull that deficit right back as they come down the front straight away. It's just a matter of time. He comes from about six seconds back and run him right down. Of course, you've got to start wondering now as they've already put a lap on Lake Speed and a lap on Jerry Nadeau. Take a look at this battle here. You've got Jeremy Mayfield in the 12, Kenny Wallace in the 81. That is for fourth and fifth. Mark Martin is in third spot right now. And Jeff Gordon, or Burton at least, is closing in there in the 99 machine. And Bill Elliott in the 94 there has been on a constant run towards the front. You see Jeff Gordon there dropping back. Jeff Gordon now in ninth. Our friends at Duralube, who remind you that they've got tomorrow's technology today, bringing you the aerial shots of the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. John Antretti in the Richard Petty Colors 43, Bill Elliott going by him, and here comes Dale Jarrett. Now up to 12th spot, Glenn, your brother's driving the wheels off of that Ford. Yeah, Eli, he was talking about it being a little loose, but I tell you, he must like it. I'm looking at the, at the uh, back here with a clock on the cars right now dale is about two tenths of a lap quicker than anybody else out there he's moved up to 12. bobby hamilton again doing a great job he's all the way up to 16th from back there and we got a battle for the lead right now still rick mast outside johnny benson to the inside they're coming in on brett bodine that white and blue car just ahead of them you see benson there finally going into the lead so the new leader johnny benson took the lead in lap number 52. 
You gotta wonder whether Rick Nash was abusing his tires some using that higher groove. Well, I would say he was probably using a lot of the tire itself and, and healing it off because you can see right now Johnny Benson starting to stretch it out. I don't know whether Rick Nash went up there because he thought it was faster or because he had to because the car wouldn't turn down low. Benson had never led here at Rockingham until this afternoon, and right now he is looking awful good. That car is going any place on the racetrack that he wants it to go. And Jack Roush and Steve Meal have got to have smiles on that go from year to year watching this kid's performance. And very honestly, the only way Johnny Benson even saw the leaders here in past races was when they came by to lap him. He never finished on the lead lap. He never finished better than 20th. Hey, watch John Andretti there in the 43. 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th right there going at it. You see Rusty Wallace who joined into this battle too. Well, let's remind ourselves that that number 43 team is the same team that won here last fall. Unfortunately, it's not the same car. It's not the same driver. It's not the same chassis setup, they told me this morning. It's not even the same paint job. It's running about the same, isn't it? Mere technicalities on other stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, other than that, it's exactly identical. By the way, folks, want to thank you so much. All of you who have been logging on to your computer at the Rockingham98.com address trying to access the in-car cameras that are on the internet. The great news is you're responding. The bad news is so many of you have responded that the system is having trouble keeping up. So here's what we've got for you. If you'd like, just log on to country.com. That is TNN's regular internet site. And there'll be those little icons there. You can click on to those and they will take you through a bit of a back door to the Rockingham 98 location. So those of you who tried at, 90, at Rockingham98.com and couldn't get through because all the lines were jammed, go to www.country.com and just follow the little icons and they'll take you to the internet and the in-car cameras. And there you go, Dale Jarrett worked around Kenny Wallace, give Jarrett ninth now. Wallace is back to 10th. Jeff Gordon is behind them in 11th. Remind you that Dale Jarrett in that number 88 car started all the way back in the 32nd position, lost a motor in his qualifying run, so he wound up at the back of the pack to start this thing, but he sure got that car dialed in right now. I would like to know how you finished second four times in a row at a racetrack. That's got to That's be remarkable. That is remarkable. Dale Jarrett's done that. But today, if he stays hooked up like he's running, he's going to be up there making those leaders live a hard life before too long. We are caution free. And that's why the leaders this quickly are beginning now to lap all the way up to 37th. That's Chad Little just ahead. Todd Parrott looking on. He's the crew chief for Dale Jarrett. He likes what he sees. Brought to you by L.A. West Luxury Vans. The world's ultimate sport utility vehicle. L.A. West Luxury Vans. Available at select Ford dealerships nationwide. Call us at 800-786-VANS. Welcome back, everybody, as Johnny Benson, the number 26, that yellow and blue machine, puts a lap now on Jeff Green, the 33rd place runner. He has already lapped Bobby Labonte, Chad Little. Kyle Petty went a lap down moments ago. As a matter of fact, Kyle and Mike Skinner, as soon as they went laps down, elected to make early pit stops. Both of those fellows came in at lap 63. We're now at lap 65. And Joe Nemechek is in right now. Same thing there, Eli. As soon as he got lapped into the pits, he went for tires. Why? Speeds have dropped off. The leaders have dropped off some seven or eight miles an hour from where they started. And that's just the tires losing the grip. Jeff Gordon now pits. He's in at lap 66, as you see Rick Mast running in second on your screen. Jeff Gordon into the attention of Ray Abraham and the crew. Matt Yoakum. 45 miles per hour down the road. You're going to see most everybody think of four tires on this first pit stop. Tire wear is so great here at Rockingham. Mike Trower going to work on the right rear. Already around to the left side. Jeff said the car is way, way, way loose, guys. Let's tighten this up. They're going to make some adjustments with their pressure. The fuel already in. Jeff Gordon's down and away. Glenn? Well, Matt, over in the back stretch right now, Jerry Nader is in. Uh, our, uh, Derek Cook just goes by. Both those cars I've been watching them come off the crew have been very, very loose, so they're trying to tighten them up. He's down and away. Uh, we've got some other guys, 18, and Bobby Labonte will be in very shortly. In fact, he's coming down pit road right now. So on lap number 68, Bobby Labonte will come into the attention of the crew, and let's see what Jimmy Maycar and the bunch can do. 
be a four tire change. They're also going to make an adjustment. They're going to put uh, two pounds in the left rear of the track bar up one round. Bobby's just fighting a, uh, a loose condition. As, uh, as I said earlier, tight in the middle and loose top. So uh, they're having to work on both ends of the thing right now. He also is down in the way. You really get a great look coming off a two back here at just how loose some of these cars are. There's Jeff Gordon there right there now with Rick Mast directly ahead of him. Of course, Mast hasn't stopped yet. You see the difference right there. Jeff Gordon in 24 with four fresh tires. Right now, Ricky Rudd's in the way, but Jeff Gordon much quicker than the second-place car with the four brand-new tires. See in the corner there, he pulls about four car lengths just getting in there. Comparison. Joe Nimichek, 148 miles an hour on his last lap. Johnny Benson, 140. We're talking eight miles an hour difference from the new tires to the old tires. But again, before long, the new will become old, and it'll all even out again. Well, that's Johnny Benson there in the 26, and Jeff Gordon in the 24 just behind him. You can see no problem whatsoever to just pull up on a car that passed him not long ago. Here comes Benson. Here, Johnny Benson is in with the attention of the crew. Terry Labonte is in. Rick Mast comes in. Ricky Rudd comes in. Let's go to Steve Burns. Johnny Benson on his way in. We heard speculation that Mark Martin may stay out and try and get five bonus points for leading a lap. Benson now on pit road. Obviously, they will make a four-tire change. This team trying to reverse their fortune after missing the Daytona 500. A second now with Matt Yoker. Rick Mast already in his pit box getting service. Expected to have a four-tire pit stop. You can see they made two rounds lower on the track. Remember, he was complaining the car was a little bit loose. This is a four-tire pit stop. As he said, most of them taking on four tires because tire wear is so great. And he's down in the way, 23.6 seconds. Mark Martin is right now being shown as the race leader, but he, too, will have to make a pit stop here at lap number 74. So Mark Martin comes down the pit lane. The leader is now Bill Elliott as we go to Mark Martin's pit. They want to win the championship. Jimmy Fennex crew after the wall. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Steve over the back stretch. Dale Jarrett is in. A little bit of trouble on the left side. He's down in about 19 seconds. Earnhardt was in for 22. Steve? Mark Martin's been going well. They have some new crew members on his team. Mike Aird on the track. Looks like a good stop so far. No chance to adjust it. Mark Martin is gone. 20 seconds even. Feverish pace on the front and the back pit road now being shown as the race leader. There he is. Many of the other top names have already pitted. Jeff Burton has not. He is going to be running in second as Elliott now begins to make his pit stop. And John Andretti is in. Matt? It's a four-tire pit stop for John Andretti. They've already made a leg adjustment on his car. Andretti, like most everyone today, is complaining his car is a tad loose, and he's down and away. Of Jeff Burton behind him. He's in for service. The crew with a new crew chief for Bill Elliott here in 1998, taking care of the McDonald's Ford. Joe Garoni is in charge of the crew right now. He's the guy on the front tires that just showed Elliott the way to go forward to the front of the back is what he wants. Joe Garoni, he's a good one, too. Been around the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, been a couple of years with that 94 team. And when uh, Mike Beam was going to move into a business role, oh, trouble on the wall, Robert Presley. Robert up against Presley the wall, up there. Two, caution the wall, on the speedway. Down, caution there, on, the the speedway. Down, on the speedway. And close call there on those self-cleaning banks for Robert Presley. Boy, he hit it and hit it and hit it again, didn't he? Did. he? Lap 77, the first caution flag of the day. The leader is Johnny Benson. Everything has cycled back around just barely, but it has cycled back around. The timing in this sport sometimes is, is so very special because you can find yourself going a lap down just as easily as finding yourself back on the point. Let's take a look at what happened, guys. That's Robert Presley there. He starts up, looks like a tire might have been going down. He goes up, hits the outside wall. Now watch the car hug that wall. He's out. The car's doing all that. He's not holding it up there. The right front probably bent all the way back against the cow. So caution is on the speedway. Robert Presley spins at lap 77. The leader now is Johnny Benson. 
ahead of Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Rick Mast. Him. The cars are under caution right now from Robert Presley's incident over here off of turn two. To update you on what happened in the pits, everybody had pitted under green. A couple of the cars have come back in. However, Dale Jarrett seemed to have gained the most. They had a great pit stop. He came out in fourth position. Also, Bobby Hamilton uh, had a good pit stop back here. He's still in 16th, but remember, he started way back in the field. Right now, Dale Earnhardt is back in. We'll check on him. Here's Matt. Well, Glenn, you were talking all day about tire wear. The tires aren't wearing out. Now, if we can take a look at the tire that came off Rick's mass car, you can still see he's got plenty of rubber still on the tire. The problem, the tires are giving up speed. So teams don't want to lose a lot of time on the track. So we're probably going to start seeing some short pitting as the race progresses. Because if you start losing time on the racetrack, it's a lot faster to come in, get service, get four new tires, and try to make up that time on the racetrack. Steve? And problem for Kenny Wallace. Kenny started this race from the second position, the outside pole. But on that last round of pit stops, Wallace took on four tires. They had a problem on the right rear. Kenny Wallace is now 20th. Dick Trick also just came in to take on four more tires. We'll be back with more from the Goodrich Service Plus 400 here in Rockingham, North Carolina. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Good Wrench Service Plus 400 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. At Napa, we keep America running. And by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. We are back getting set for green here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. The top five, Johnny Benson, Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Rick Mast, all are driving for Tauruses. The front five are all Tauruses. As now, Greg Sachs has a problem on the start. You saw him not come up to speed. He cut to the inside of the racetrack. Everybody gets by safely enough, but a scary moment there for Greg Sachs as something was amiss on the number 98 machine. Just before we went to green, 10 different drivers pitted for new tires, even though the tires they had on their cars were really only about 12 laps old on the racetrack. Among them, Schrader, Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Kyle Petty, all pitted for fresh rubber. Matt, what are you hearing from the Greg Sachs pit? Well, Greg is back up to full song, but the problem is he believes he broke third gear, so he's going to have some trouble on restarts today if indeed he's broken that third gear. Right now, though, he appears to be back up to full speed. You see Sterling Merlin there in the 40, trying to get his lap back on Johnny Benson there. You see Hutt Strickler in the eight. He's back in the lead lap now. These guys are fighting it out. That's why they're giving these guys a hard time, but look at a fight for the lead right now. Sterling's on the tail end of the lead lap, along with the eight of Hutt Strickland. The leader, Johnny Benson, is right behind. Then you've got Jarrett battling and grabbing second in the 88. The McDonald's car, that's Bill Elliott. He'll come battling back to try and take second spot away. This is an incredible performance by Jarrett and his crew to be pitting on the backstretch and still, after that 30-second starting spot, to be running in second this early in the race. Todd Parrott told me yesterday I've been waiting three months for this race. He <laughs> said, we love this racetrack. We have a good setup, and it's proven out well today. Quickly to Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, Dale Earnhardt, as you mentioned, Dick, Dale Earnhardt was one of those guys that came in uh, the pits uh, under that caution there. I asked Larry McReynolds what was wrong. He said nothing. Everybody else behind him pitted. Dale said he needed fresh tires, too, so they came in. Now to Steve Burns. Yeah, ditto down here, guys. Dick Trickle came in, Ward Burton, Terry Labonte. They're towards the tail end of the lead lap. They wouldn't lose any position, so why not come in and get all fresh rubber? Now let's go back up to the lead. Dale Jarrett running where he is accustomed at this racetrack. Dale Jarrett, second place. he pulled up just a second ago on the inside, Eli, coming out of turn four. He took a good look. Look at Mark Martin, a master at this racetrack, won his first ever major race right here. He knows what's going on also. And we're riding with Mark Martin, he's in third, Rick Mast is fourth, Bill Elliott fifth, and across the top of the screen, you see all the other rundowns with 305 laps to go. Dale Jarrett has never won a Winston Cup race here in that number 88 car. 
looking through the windshield of Mark Martin's car at him. He has won in the Bush Grand Nationals back in 1991. And if you think four second place finishes is something, Harry Gant did it five times wow. and never won at Rockingham. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember that stretch when Harry had all the runner-up finishes? Yeah. He just didn't want to come to this place. Yeah. Of course, Harry also had that great stretch when he could do nothing but win. Yeah. So it kind of works that way in this sport, doesn't it? Ricky Rudd is back in 39th spot. Just happened to see him go by, and there he is. Oh, we see the hands out the window. He's got a problem. He's telling everybody, stay clear. I'm going to slow on down and get to the pits as best I can. Tough break for Ricky Rudd. Meanwhile, for the lead. Jared inside of Johnny Benson. It's hard to get a good run up out of the corner, but Jared does it. You can see that car really rocketed out of that corner. Benson will lead from lap 75 to 91. Dale Jarrett, the new leader, at lap number 92. Jarrett, Benson, Martin, Rick Mast, our Bud Paul sitter, and Bill Elliott. And now Jeff Gordon in the 24, Rusty Wallace in that blue and white number two, Jeremy Mayfield, the blue and white number 12, the green and white 33, the skull colors for Ken Schrader. That's a great battle, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Schrader still hurting from that Daytona crash. Friday night, he wound up walking over to the infield care center to try to straighten himself out. Let's go to that, Yoakum. Well, Dick, I was talking to Rambert, and he told me on that last pit stop, their car was so loose it had wore out the right rear tire because Jeff had heated it up so much. They were thinking about coming in on the last caution but decided not to give up track position. He's cautioning Jeff, hey look, just take it easy on this set of tires. There's about 300 laps left to go, so we're not going to win it on lap 93. The strategy and patience, very much a name of the game. See Schrader in the 33, just at the head of that pack. Remember that Kenny right now being shown a lap down. Meanwhile, the battle for second spot. Mark Martin takes the outside route around Johnny Benson, and maybe Rick Mast can follow. See, Rick Mast on the outside there. He's taking that Harry Gant line, as you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that high line around the racetrack, keeping those RPMs up, being very smooth in the center part of the corner. So give Rick Mast third. It is Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, Rick Mast now third. There's Johnny Benson battling Bill Elliott fourth and fifth. Benson in the 26, Elliott the 94. Can the lead go away? Absolutely. Anytime you see Mark Martin going to the inside, the lead is over with. He has the lead going down the back straightaway here. Lap 92 through 96, it belonged to Dale Jarrett. Now Mark Martin, lap number 97, takes over the top spot. And old Rick Mast, you see that yellow card to the left of your screen there? He's making that outside groove work. Martin won his first ever career Winston Cup race right here in 1989. The October event was his first victory. Boy, Mast on the outside. Yeah, just watch that as he goes into the corner again. Yeah. Far different than everybody else. Now Bill Elliott's going to try it. It don't take very long when you pass the car. He'll watch where you're quick at. And they'll try it a couple of laps. If the car does not work there, you have to go back to the bottom. But I'd look for Rick Mass to have a lot of company on the high side. What's more important, buddy, where you as a human like to drive and are most comfortable or where the car is most comfortable? You absolutely go with the machine. Where you're comfortable means nothing. And that absolutely has to do with getting that car around the quickest way. Gordon, meanwhile, has backslid all the way to 17th. Let's follow here as everybody comes by, and more guys come by, and more guys come by, and Jeff Gordon still backsliding now to 18th. Matt, what are you hearing? Eli, Jeff Gordon says, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose. I can't run low, I can't run high. I'm just hanging on right now, hopefully going to our next pit stop. Now let's go to Steve Burns. Well, Matt, Ricky Rudd is sitting in the garage here. He finished 42nd at Daytona. A rough start to the season. Just spoke to Bill Engel, the new general manager on this team. He says they believe they have a broken rocker arm. They're going to try and get Ricky back out on the racetrack. So the repairs underway. Meanwhile, remember a short while ago when Kyle Petty was battling and he found himself down a lap, but then Sterling Marlin in on exchange got back on the tail end of the lead lap. Well, now from the race leader, 
Sterling has pulled away. And we'll give you a look at that here in a second, but we do want to stay with Johnny Benson and them for a moment. But Mark Martin is the race leader, and all of a sudden, just ahead and pulling away is Sterling Marlin. Maybe a name to think about as the day continues, but here's a good battle for fifth now. Eli, this is a good example of what happens with just a few tweaks on the car. Rusty Wallace is now up there with Johnny Benson trying to get by, and Johnny Benson struggling right now. Well, the 2 and the 12 locked together. This looks like the Daytona 500, where they spent so much of the day nose to tail. Now, watch from the Duraloop aerial camera. There's the leader, Mark Martin. Remember how Sterling had just gotten his lap back? Well, you still don't see him. We'll widen out now and see as the field comes by. There he is, Sterling Marlin. He's got about three seconds now, maybe three and a half, on the leader. So although he is still in 33rd spot, still one of the quicker cars on the racetrack. I'm going to tell you a little secret, though. He who lives by the sword also can die by it. He's gone out there really outrun the leader at this point, but he's used his tires up. It won't be long before the leaders run him down. I'd say 15 more laps. What he's got to hope for is a caution. We have had just one caution today. It came out when Robert Presley hit the wall at lap number 77 in car number 77. There's the rundown at the rock. Hammer under caution. David Green in the 96 has hit the wall. Mark Martin in for service. Four tires. Let's go to Matt Yoko. Rick Mass, the pole sitter, already in his box. Right side tires on. Left side tires going on. A little trouble there in the left and on the backstretch, Dale Jarrett has come in. This will give us the first look to see what pitting on the backstretch will do to DJ because this is the first time they have had to pit under caution. I see a couple of three, four cars going by right now. They're just to the left side. He's down and away in 18 and a half seconds, but he's going to be good, do good to come out in the top 10, guys. And there is the reason we are under caution, as Steve Burns alluded. David Green, hard tag in the wall, turns one and two. And remarkably, now 27 career starts in NASCAR Winston Cup racing for him. He is still not finished in the top 15, nor will he today. We're coming right back. And we're still under caution here at Rockingham. The field's still moving slowly around the racetrack. We've got a co one car still on pit road back here. Jerry Nadeau has some nose damage to his car. As we told you, Dale Jarrett came in third. He went out in, I believe, ninth position. A lot of conversation going on back here among the crew chiefs of some of these good cars about where they're being marked when they get out of the pits as to where they fall in line on the racetrack. Larry McReynolds has been in the NASCAR official's ear for the last uh, 45 seconds to a minute, so they're trying to get this thing updated. Here's Matt. Well documented, Jeff Gordon's running in Rockingham today. He was trying to hold on to the top ten, fighting a loose race car. When he came in for that last pit stop, he took on four tires. They also added a spring rubber, hoping that may be an answer to his problems today. He's now 28. Steve? Well, Matt, the sixth crew down here had a tremendous pit stop. Jack Roush on the radio told the guys, you just had your first 17-second pit stop. Now, as far as the car is concerned, Mark has radioed back and said the car is running perfect. So that's the update from the pit lane. There's Steve Grissom pulling away after pitting at lap 110 and lap 111. The hood has been up on the Kodiak machine, and he is now back onto the racetrack, but a costly series of stops. Now let's back up a little bit and show you what happened to David Green. Okay, what they do there, you can see he gets in the back of Bodine, but you can see Green get into the outside wall hard with the back of the car. Thank God for fuel cells, because if he hadn't had that, that would have been a massive fire. There are some of the pit stops and the pit summary. Some improved, but again, that back pit area, look at uh, some going from fifth all the way back to 22nd, Burton did. Hamilton also back pitting, and he went way to the back of the field. And there again, Charlie Presley and the boys continuing to work on that right front of the Monte Carlo. Right now, while we have an opportunity, Larry McReynolds is standing by with the AutoZone Tech Fact. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts.
times when you see a stock car hit a wall, the first thing you see after that is the big fire erupts under the hood. Now, what causes that is the fuel pump gets knocked off, and fuel just keeps siphoning out of the fuel cell. Gets on the rotors and headers and causes a big fire. Now, what NASCAR has done this year, we've installed this little valve in the fuel system. Now, we normally run six to seven pounds of fuel pressure under normal running conditions. It takes two pounds to open this valve. So if this valve don't see the two pounds, it shuts off. So if the fuel pump gets knocked off, no more fuel will flow. So hopefully this year, when a race car hits a wall, at least we won't have a fire. Amen to that, because fire is everybody's most severe fear around a racetrack. Under caution in Rockingham, we're back in a moment. Getting set to go back to green here at Rockingham. Lap 116 is when the green will fly. Mark Martin is the race leader. Stories to watch. Remember, from the back pits, Dale Jarrett right now, the best of the lot. He's running in ninth spot. Reversal of fortune. Johnny Benson didn't make the Daytona 500. He's now running fifth, and he's already led today. Pontiac-wise, do they dominate today? Well, the best running Pontiac is John Andretti in 10th after Pontiac has won 10 of the last 20 races. Here. Green, green flag, flag green in the flag. air. Can Schrader and Skinner get a lap back? That's the question. It's Mark Martin leads them back to turn one. Schrader is that green and white car to the inside. Skinner won't get a lap back, but Schrader's going to hang up. Schrader's agenda will be different than that of Mark Martin on the outside. Schrader doesn't have to take care of his tires as badly. He's got to get the lap back, but even so, it doesn't look like he's going to do it, buddy. Looks like Mark Martin's got a great run off the corner there. It's going to be tough to close ground on that race car. When Mark Martin's good at this racetrack, he's awfully good. He's won eight times in the Bush Grand National Circuit here. Nine times, the doctor says. But interestingly, hasn't won here in a Winston Cup car since 1989. So uh, you've got that uh, bit of a dry spell, though he has had victories here, certainly, of plenty. Steve Burns is in the pit area. Eli, we just talked about the remarkable 17-second pit stop for Mark Martin. Now, there's only one guy on the over-the-wall gang on this team that was with this team last year. Dennis Ritchie, the only remaining pit crew guy over the wall. Are brand new from other teams, so pretty amazing what they just pulled off here on pit road. No doubt about it. Those guys are athletes in their own right. Now to Matt Yoakum, more on Mark Martin's team. Well, Eli, if you recall back to last October, Mark Martin had a really fast race car. The problem, it wasn't good on long runs. We talked about different people today who are better on long runs, like the 75 car Rick Mast. Mark Martin set up, he was great on short runs. That's what they've been trying to work on all weekend. And today, again, you can see at the end of that run before the caution flag, the other cars were starting to catch him a little bit. So he's still working at getting that car dialed in for the longer run. What do we say, guys? Bill's getting Austin in second place there. He's doing a great job. Back in the pack here, you can see Dale Jarrett there having a real battle. This is looking back at the 94 car, and now we're back in the crowd again. There's uh, Jarrett on the outside there trying to work himself back in the good track position. One of the fastest cars here, but when they stop and make a pit stop, he seems to really lose a lot of track position. They're looking at changing that. There is some consideration to opening the pits up here on the front straightaway so that instead of the pits beginning after the cars exit turn four, they start somewhere within turn four as they used to do at the old North Wilkesboro Speedway. That would resolve that problem, but at least for right now, every time Dale Jarrett pits, he's going to have his hands full trying not to lose a whole bunch of spots. Battle for third, a good one now. Craven is in fourth. Rusty Wallace to his inside has third. You see the run down across the top of the screen. Napa Auto Parts bringing you NASCAR timing and scoring. There's Craven in fourth. Wow, that outside camera on the 50 car of Craven must be right against the wall, because I'm telling you, it looked like he was rubbing it coming, coming off turn two just then. That's his habit. Every time Ricky Craven runs here, he goes upstairs as soon as the tires start to wear in a little bit. I asked him why that was. He sort of looked at me and winked and said, I'm not going to tell you. It's my little secret. <laughs> we <laughs> talked about rookies during our pre-race show. Let's take you back to 21st spot. You see Kenny Irwin in that black, gold, and orange machine, the Texaco Haviland colors. He was battling Dale Earnhardt moments ago and won the battle for 21st and 22nd. You look ahead towards them. That was Derek Cope in the 30 there on the inside, the black car. J. 
Jeff Gordon's got his hands full today. I'm telling you, he's back here in the pack. He and Terry Labonte both are struggling right now. In a car called Buckhead, and they may be wondering <laughs> about choice of cars. I'm glad you said that, because I didn't know if I wanted to step into the middle of that. I'll tell you, the rookies are having a pretty interesting day today. It's a lot to learn, Matt Yoakum. Far different running here than running at Daytona. Eli definitely saw his 393 laps of classroom work out here today. Mark Reno told me the biggest problem the rookies will have this weekend is the fact that the tires fall off, and apparently the 17 cars in the wall. You like? Darrell Walton yeah, is in the wall, running in 40th position, already three laps down. You see the fans running the sea as Carson is on the speedway, lap 127. Darrell Waltrip in the wall, and also problems for Greg Sachs. There comes Sachs onto the screen now, as his Ford Taurus begins to erupt smoke from the rear of the automobile. So Mark Martin is the race leader. We are under caution, lap 127. Whole DW had it stacked up against him today from the get-go, guys. Darrell was uh, a lap down before you really knew it. There's his wife, Stevie, looking on. Obviously disappointed, though at this point, clear that obviously Darrell drove around to the garage area, but uh, you hate to see it for Darrell Waltrip. You really do. I mean, today was his 51st Rockingham start. This guy's got four wins at this place, 19 tops fives, more than anybody else. He's not going to have a good finish today. Eli, I'd have to speculate that he may have got into some of the fluids coming out of the 98 car of Sachs, and that put him into the wall. That could well be if he was directly behind Sachs, and to be honest, it's close enough that it was likely because Sachs, he was running in the 30s position-wise, and Darrell was back in 40th spot. And if they got into an oil problem, an oil leak or something, there's nothing it can do. You're just along for the ride. Well, see some guys trying to fake each other out there. You see that? Some of the guys said, ah, we'll go and make the pit stop and see who goes and follows. Only Michael Waltrip actually does commit, along with Kenny Irwin. Now some of the guys further back will make their stops. Lap 128. Steve Burns is there. Eli looking at Michael Waltrip's group. Terry Hall, the jack man, is going to be a four-tire change for Michael Waltrip. Had a decent qualifying run here. Pretty clean pit stop. Michael Waltrip is down. Jeff Gordon's in. You see that uh, ratchet wrench going in, guys. An adjustment being made, Matt. Eli, they're also going to take a rubber uh, out of the right rear. Four-tire stop for Jeff Gordon. The, the rubber they put in through the spring did not seem to help, so they're going to take that out, and he's down. So, caution. On the speedway, Bobby Hamilton is in on the back pit area, Glenn. Yes, he is, Eli. They're going to change four tires behind him. Dale Earnhardt, Bobby Labonte, uh, Jeff Green, all those cars came in. Surprisingly, Dale Jarrett did not come in, so uh, they didn't have enough, uh, I guess they didn't feel like they had too many laps on those tires. Uh, they're through with Hamilton's car, it away, and wow, 20, a little over 20 seconds, he's followed out by Bobby Labonte. Here comes Earnhardt, he was the third one in, but the fourth one out, he lost his spot to Jeff Green there. And you saw Derek Colt right behind as well, having made his stop. There's Ken Schreeder in for service. All of this under caution at lap 129. Under caution here at Rockingham. Hey, folks, remember to race into the all-new and official store of NASCAR. Visit NASCAR Thunder, now open in cities everywhere. For locations and more information, call 615-883-7000. Monday through Friday. Eli Gold, Dick Bergren, Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum, Steve Burns, Stefan Heinrich, Manfred Yankee, and Jürgen Kalva. That is the booth next door to us. The German broadcast team on hand here. So, also, Manfred Janke, uh, Jürgen Kavler und Stefan Heinrich für Sie aus Rockingham uh, direkt dabei. Nach wie vor Gelblichtphase auf der Strecke nach dem Unfall von Daryl Waltrip. Mit the gentleman closest to the screen in the white sweater, Manfred Janke, has been with the Porsche Motor Company for better than 20 years. The gentleman in the black shirt, Stefan Heinrich, who is the play-by-play -play man, they are here. All of Europe gets the broadcast through Eurosport. The Germans come to the racetrack, do their own live commentary. The French have a commentary that is added from a studio in Paris. Many 
countries across the country uh, wake up across the world wake up and, and see Eli Buddy and Dick which is enough for I guess <laughs> detente or something I, there but I get a tremendous amount of mail from the uh, Far East I, I really do I mean from yeah. uh, different countries in Europe and everywhere you know it's really amazing it's worldwide now only problem is you don't know the language so you can't answer the oh, Wiener schnitzel to you <laughs> <laughs> to the garage let's get an update on Daryl Walter and Eli's standing by with him he's overlooking the uh, work going on his car although it has stopped right now Daryl hard hit there you okay yeah I'm okay I you know I just said to myself I just told the guys I said you know this car is so bad I don't say I could get any worse and about that time, 98 blew up right in front of me, and I couldn't do nothing. I got in the oil and spun the thing into the fence, but uh, it might have done me a favor because I'm getting rather ill out there. This, these are the meanest driving, illest handling, slipping and slidingest, stinkingest bunch of race cars I ever saw. <laughs> I hope that uh, they take a look at this rule deal because this, this ain't no good for Chevrolet, I can tell you that. I just wish one time the man would say what he really means. Matt? <laughs> well, I'm going to cut off with Jimmy Finning, the crew chief for Mark Martin. Jimmy? You guys have got it up to the point. How is the car now in the longer runs? Have you got it to where you want it? Yeah, the car's been good all day. You know, on long runs, we were pretty pleased with it. Uh, we haven't made no adjustments yet. We'll just wait and see what happens. You're doing some hand signals with Steve Beal. What were you guys hand signaling about? Oh, we are just saying, I asked him what his car was doing. He asked me what our car was doing. Well, he's looking for a win today. Steve Burns? And with David Green, his car's a mess. But, David, you're okay, and what happened? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, you know, the car was pretty good there, and I think the Chevrolet's suffering a little bit now. Uh, you know, we were awful loose right there, and Jeff Gordon was at first, and made adjustments a lot better. And past Kenny Irwin, then right after that, my car uh, started missing, carrying on, and was getting ready to pit and do something about it, and uh, just kind of met at the wrong place at the right time, and it's not Kenny's fault, and it sure ain't my fault, but uh, that's racing, I guess, but sure hate it. I was going to try to get in the next lap because we had a, a major problem developing and a uh, short day. But, you know, I think uh, hopefully the fans, I'm going to get a good seat because it's pretty slippery out there. And, and, and I just base a lot of things on, like, Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon. When those guys are kind of struggling, you know, what's that sum up about the way the picture is? And uh, our car was pretty loose, but awful proud this Chevrolet Monte Carlo in qualifying. We did a great job first in class, and I'm ready to go to Vegas. This is a tough way to start, but uh, I've dealt with it before, and we'll deal with it again. All right, David, let's go back to Eli. All right, guys, thank you very much. The uh, blower now is clearing off all of the excess Speedy Dry. So much oil was put down by the Greg Sachs car that they've really had to put down a ton of Speedy Dry, and they've brought out the blower to clean things off. So we'll run a few more laps of caution. We are at lap 133. Mark Martin is the leader. Here's what you've missed. If you're just joining us, lap number 52, Johnny Benson took the lead from the Bud Pole Center, Rick Mast. Lap 77, the first caution of the day of the three we've had. Robert Presley was in the wall. He's done for the afternoon. Dale Jarrett then takes the lead at car number 88. Lap 92, he blows right by Johnny Benson, but Mark Martin returns the honor, grabbing the lead at lap number 97 as we work the final moments of caution here at Rockingham with one lap to go until green. There's another computer address you want to make sure you put a bookmark into your system for. www.nascar.com. NASCAR Online. Our 24-hour NASCAR Garage Pass. Scoring news statistics. If it's about NASCAR, it's right there at NASCAR Online. Check it out when you get a chance or when you get to the computer. Let's go to the pits quickly. Steve Burns. With Robert Presley. Eli, they are feverishly working on this Taurus. Rob, uh, Robert, can you get back in the race? Yeah, we're getting ready. We're going to get it back right, you know, where we can go out there. We had an awful good race car there before we had trouble. And this Jasper Thunder uh, Taurus has been running pretty good all day. And should update, Ricky Rudd is officially done for the day. Glenn Jarrett. Hey, thanks, Steve. We're over in Dale Earnhardt's fish. You see Chocolate Myers down on his knee here. They're putting new lug nuts on these tires. The ones that they were using, the painted ones, these are the, the plain silver ones. They're using this sticky uh, rubber adhesive here to, to adhere the lug nuts to the wheels. We're getting ready to go green here in just a second, but the other ones weren't sticking. Also, uh, there's a dent right in the right front of Earnhardt's car. I asked Larry McReynolds if that would make it push. He said, man, I hope so. It's been loose all day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going ready? back to green now, lap 137. Up, Mark Martin up, ahead of Bill Elliott. There is one Chevy and one Pontiac in the top ten. The other eight runners are four Tauruses. 
also to keep in mind as we go through this restart is that many of the teams in the back elected to pit. They put new tires on. And as a result, their cars are going to be much faster than the cars that are in the front of the pack. They didn't want to pit because they didn't want to lose track position. Hey, there's Jeff Bodine right there in the Phillips machine. Started 20th. He's up to 7th now, guys. Very quietly, he's made his way towards the front. Now grabs another position and moved him up to 6th. Great run here for Jeff Bodine. Great job, uh, Jeff Bodine. I know that these guys are looking for a good performance today. This is his type of racetrack. He's a very patient race car driver. Knows how to make the car handle. Looks for him to be a factor if he can run all day. His crew chief, Tim Brewer, with 53 career NASCAR Winston Cup wins, ranks him only second to the legendary Leonard Wood as far as career wins for crew chiefs are concerned. Riding with Ricky Craven, he's fourth. The two of Wallace, just ahead of him in third. They're in the only Chevrolet in the top ten right now. Craven in a class by himself. He'll run low until the tires start wearing down a little bit. Then he goes upstairs right near the wall. Well, he's letting it just shoot into the corner and straight up the top part of the racetrack. You can see almost the full car length higher than Bill Elliott in the 94 just in front of him. What he's doing right now is just running where the car feels the freest and they're not burning the tires up. And there's Mr. Wallace on the bottom looking for second spot. Didn't we tell you early in the broadcast he would come back even though he had a rough start. Wallace now with the car dialed in, he takes second. So give Rusty Wallace second spot. Bill Elliott now in third, riding with Ricky Craven in fourth. All of this is taking place one and four ten seconds behind Mark Martin, the leader. And look at how quickly it shuffles again. That one Chevy, though, Whoa. is doing the Monte Carlo for Gabe Brown. We were talking about Bodine. You could see him fighting back on the inside the seven car there. Doing a great job today. Getting by Bill Elliott, getting into turn one. His bobsled team did a great job in the Olympics. They finished fourth, almost got a medal. Unfortunately, they hit the wall in a place they called the Graveyard Turn, and that cost them a gold medal. I love watching that bobsled luge and all that stuff, don't you? Yeah, but Dine says it looks like tires. He said the whole secret of that bobsled is that the uh, runners that are underneath, he said you got to have the right combination for the right surface, just like a racetrack, and you has got to have the right tires. Interesting, they were saying that in the bobsled, it's not the team that drives the most it is the team that actually moves and drives the least that does the best and well, the Americans did a great showing and so too is Jeff Bodine now being shown in the fourth spot just joining us 34 teams still on the lead lap Bodine's never won here either this is his 33rd start he's finished second one time that's his best ever at Rockingham there is Jeff, got that sponsorship from Phillips in the middle of Speed Weeks, 98 at Daytona. It's a good team. They're going to be strong in 1998. See Ricky Craven there. He is really high right now. Made that pay off in the race here last year. He was up front all day long, running right around the rim of the racetrack. But you can tell he is really going to be a factor if he can keep tires under it running that high. And there you see the 26, Johnny Benson, the 75, Rick Mask. They're up to 6th and 7th. Great to have Billy Ray Cyrus join us here today. He stopped into the booth, Mercury recording artist. Great to see you. How you doing? Oh, it's doing great, man. It's just hard to fit this hat on over these headphones. <laughs> I, I guess that's obviously uh, another hat. Didn't you auction one away during uh, Sterling Marlin Steel in uh, Tennessee? Actually, uh, it was my TNN Music City News Award uh -huh. that the uh, fans had given us last year for the song Trail of Tears. And uh, they raised quite a bit of money with that award. I knew that our fans are very giving fans, and I knew they would want to uh, help the children that Sterling's uh, charity helps uh, there in Tennessee. And uh, they raised a lot of money with that award. And uh, fortunately, we're nominated for six more this year at the TNM Music City Music Awards. Ricky Craven there in the 50 got a little loose there on the high side of the racetrack. Thought about going for the lead. But he's run Mark Martin down from about a 10 car length disadvantage. You can see him using that high line there. Mark Martin hugging a little bit lower on the racetrack. But he's making a great run toward the front right now. 31, Mike Skinner not battling for the lead. He's a lap down in 34th position. 
And now Martin going around Kenny Schrader yet again. Billy Ray Cyrus, would something like this uh, really get you going? I know you hang around racetracks. We've seen you many times. This is something you try, oh, wouldn't it? Oh, I, my earliest memories growing up back in Kentucky and uh, watching a lot of great races. And uh, it brings out, i got to say hi to my mom and uh, Cletus. Uh, Cletus has been a NASCAR fan for as long as I can remember, and I know he's at home watching the race this evening. So, Mom, Cleet, I hope you all enjoy the race. We're at lap 149 of the total today. 393 makes up the distance. You can see Jeff Bodine's car kind of weave a little bit coming out of the corner there. He's losing a little bit of grip with the rear tires now. Mike Skinner going by on the outside, and Rusty Wallace looking also to the outside. That is third and fourth on your screen. The 97 Chad Little, that green and yellow car at the back of the pack. He's at 35th being shown a lap down. But all the others are battling for position there in the middle of your picture. We're chatting with Billy Ray Cyrus, recently nominated for six CNN Music City News Country Awards, including Entertainer of the Year. You know, even if I, I think you well could win it, even if you don't, that's got to be a heck of an uh, honor. You know what you mentioned there, that your question before this kind of reminds me of, of this music business a whole lot. You know, there's a whole lot in common with the NASCAR and race car driving and, and being in the country music. And uh, I think, uh, you know, one of the things is, you know, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not and, and uh, sometimes you're going real fast and sometimes you hit the wall and crash and burn you know what I mean there's a lot of parallels between race cars and, uh, and and being in this business well listen we're tickled to have you here today your rendition of the national anthem was wonderful oh, and uh, don't be a stranger come by again oh, anytime well I love NASCAR and I, I love being around the races and, and the NASCAR fans and country music go hand in hand they're the greatest fans in the whole wide world good to see you Billy Ray good seeing you all Billy but Ray Cyrus Joining us here at the Rock, and hey, look who's joining the party now. You saw the 36 right there, Ernie Irvin. He's running in the 10th spot now. He started 40th, and Jimmy Spencer there in the 23. Jimmy is now in 8th, and he started in 28th position. So how about that? All of a sudden, those guys uh, creeping up into the picture, and Matt, both men, Ernie and Jimmy Spencer, had good runs at Daytona, as you remember. Carried a lot of momentum from Daytona, Eli. During Daytona, some people may not know, but Ernie's wife, Kim, gave birth to the second child, Jared. He was three weeks premature. He's been in the hospital since birth. But tonight, on his way home from the race today, Ernie's going to stop off at the hospital and pick him up. He says, I'm sure Jared wouldn't mind, though, if we have to delay that a little bit by making a trip to Vicky Lane. Now, Ernie's going to win today, whatever happens on the racetrack. No doubt about that. Speaking of Ernie, I talked to Ryan Pemberton earlier in the week, and he said, you cannot believe how much enthusiasm he's added to the race team. Ryan's the crew chief for that. Team. Absolutely. And he says when we do pit, pit practice, he gets in there, and the guys gripe a little bit about having to do it a couple of extra times. He gets, jumps in there and does it with them. He's a shop regular. They say he comes into the shop in the morning, he's dressed up in his jeans and work clothes, just walks in and says, okay, guys, what do you want me to do today? It has really sparked the morale of that team. Well, look at the other guy, too, in the picture, the 12 there, Jeremy Mayfield. He was a fabricator when he first got going. He was a go-kart racer. Then he went to work for Earl and Chuck Sadler, who had the 95 car for so long. And Jeremy was a fabricator there. All those little things, anything you can do to help and to learn, and in Ernie's case, there to contribute on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what separates the successful from those who aren't quite as successful. There's the race leader, Mark Martin, by six-tenths of a second. He's got the edge on Ricky Craven. It's a Ford ahead of a Chevrolet. Welcome back. Mark Martin is now the leader over Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, and Johnny Benson. The first Chevrolet, now 15th position. That's Sterling Marlin. Where's Ricky Craven? When you left, he was in second. He made an unscheduled pit stop and has now backslid all the way. He was at lap 158, Steve, when he backslid and came in for a stop. He's now 38th and being shown a lap down. Yeah, terrible break for Ricky Craven. I just talked to Tony Fur, the crew chief, and he said they had a bad vibration. They changed four tires. They not cut down a tire. They did not want, but they have a bad vibration, and they just can't get it to go away. Terrible break for Ricky Craven. It is a tough, tough break right there, so that reshuffles things just a bit with Rusty Wallace and Bodine now having settled second for the moment behind Mark Martin, and there is Ricky Craven. 13 and 3 tenths seconds down from being on the lead lap. 
So he's a lap plus 13 and a half seconds in arrears to the leader, Mark Martin. I want to say a special hello to Tim Block. Last night he was inducted into the North Carolina Racing Hall of Fame. Only the third man to receive that award. Richard Petty was the first. Bobby Allison was the second. They went to his house to get it done. Tim Block, suffering from cancer, took his medication so he could be awake, alert, and in good shape for this race. We know you're watching, Tim. We're thinking about you. Definitely Tim. so. One of the all-time greats. Tim's a good friend of mine. I tell you, he's a friend of racing, period. And Tim, we all are just uh, thinking of you, my friend. Definitely so. There's the scoring rundown brought to you by MCI, presenting NASCAR timing and scoring. The 12 there, the blue and white car, Jeremy Mayfield, he's an eighth. The multicolored Skittles car in ninth, that's Ernie Irvin. Let's go back to the pits and get a further update. Eli, we just heard Ricky Craven's radio communication. He says, I still have the vibration going into the corner, but it goes away in the straightaway. He said, it vibrates so bad I can hardly see. What would be causing that, Buddy Baker? What are the, the possible problems they're facing? Eli, it could be a, a, so many things. They changed all four tires, so that's eliminated. We know that that's not the problem. It could be the gear going out and starting to chip out in there and starting to vibrate through the drive train. It could be the transmission, or it could be the motor starting to vibrate. It could be a series of things. You see the 31 in moments to go there, Mike Skinner, the Lowe's car right in the middle of your screen. If you're wondering why he's running like uh, Jack the Bear and everybody else kind of standing still, remember that he pitted at lap 129. Everybody else, for the most part, came in at lap 108, at least those who were on the lead lap. And that's why you're seeing him shoot right by. He's got about 20 lap pressure tires than the others. But that's not any problem that Mark Martin is worrying about right now. By a second and a third. Hey, there's Billy Ray Cyrus. He's getting around on this <laughs> He's everywhere. <laughs> GNN Motorsports live coverage of the Good Wrench Service Plus 400 is being brought to you by Wrangler Cowboy Cut Jeans. And by the Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength. We are back. There's Johnny Benson in the 26, having gotten around Jeff Bodine in the 7. So Benson is now third. Bodine drops back to fourth. The leader is still Mark Martin with Rusty Wallace running in the second spot. You know, he's beginning to move again, guys. As you see the front two, Martin on the left and Wallace on the right is Jeff Gordon. He's beginning to climb up now. He's in the top ten. Only Triple A to make it there, but you knew, you just knew that those guys were going to get the thing done and get that car dialed in as they managed to work on it all day long. Here's Gordon on the high side, Schrader on the bottom as Gordon picks off another one. Schrader down laps. Gordon's still in the lead lap. Now Schrader's a couple of laps down being shown at 34th right now while we watch this fight here jimmy spencer's been coming up through the crowd right now in fifth place now in the 23 car there getting down into turn three what a great drive he's putting on now you know and there's been several races where jimmy spencer made that high line really worked for him in the past in Travis uh carter star so look for him to be a factor we saw the Texaco Haviland points as they run. Texaco World of Energy sponsoring our telecast here on TNN in 1998. Great to have them back on board. Jim Gordon ahead of Jeremy Mayfield, ninth and 10th on the screen. Then Schrader being shown back in 34th position. Top Pontiac, still John Andretti in 12th. There's Dale Jarrett. Running well. There you see the Pontiac right behind him of Andretti. Bobby Hamilton in the four. He's in 13th. Sterling Marlin now in 14th position and Jeff Burton in 15th. Ernie Irvin is in 16th and Dale Earnhardt is champions on. He's running in 17th right now. Jeff Burton. We'll remind you that this is the first race with NASCAR's new rules where they've got the spoiler in the back end on all of the brands and raised the nose so the cars all have less downforce right now than they had last year, which the drivers say puts more of it in the hands of the drivers. The guys who can handle a car with less grip on the racetrack and do so better, those are the guys that are going to have an advantage here. Dale Earnhardt in the three car having a little bit of handling problems there. Of course, Ricky Craven on pressure tires right now went up and just made the pass effortless as he moves in on uh, 
Irwin there, the, uh, Irvin rather, getting into turn one, you can see that the new tires are so much quicker. Now, uh, comparison in speeds for you. Ricky Craven at 143 and a half. The others that he is going by are at 140, 140.8. That's the comparison. There's Dale Earnhardt now. That's a battle for position. Earnhardt in the three. Ernie Irvin in the 36. That's for 16th spot on the screen. And Terry Labonte in the five right behind him. Also Clear in that, that battle. Three. Clear all around. You can hear the spotter say clear all around. That lets you know that you don't even have to look in the mirror. The racetrack's clean, so you can pull back up in the, the slot to get a good run off the corner. That's Ernie Irvin's team. Inside. We are eavesdropping on. So many interviews Earnhardt has done since winning the Daytona 500. He has talked championship. That eighth championship is very much on his mind. 44, Kyle Petty pits. Meanwhile, closer to the front, 23, the red and white machine for Jimmy Spencer. The 75, the pole sitter, Rick Mass. The 94, Bill Elliott. That's fifth, sixth, and seventh. Paul Spencer doing well, and the guys mentioned Kyle Petty is on pit road with our in-car cameras. That's the look on the roof cam. Down he goes off the jack, and the service is complete. Way over 4,200. And again, they say, remember, 4,200 on the tachometer. If you go quicker than that in the numbers, you're speeding down pit road. Yes, and that's a lap penalty. Nobody wants to play that. You can see the raw fuel there, unburned fuel in the 94 car. That what that is, when you back off, it fills that exhaust pipe up with unburned fuel, and when you get back, it'll puff it right back out, but it'll burn that fuel because the exhaust is so hot. Other pit stops taking place. Ted Musgrave is in for service. Lap 187 now. There's the Prime Star crew. Steve, what are you hearing for the rest of the guys? About five laps till they pit? Yeah, exactly, Eli. Ted Musgrave getting the rest of his routine service. And the 6 and the 26, Mark Martin and Johnny Betts, the Spurs talking, they should be in in just a few laps. About lap 195. Are they going with one teammate at a time, or is not really not a concern here, Steve, when you have Martin pitting alongside Musgrave? Are they keeping one stall empty constantly, or is it just coincidence? No, Eli, I think you're exactly right. Remember, at the beginning of the race, they planned it out so that Martin Martin would stay out and get five bonus points. They're probably doing that on the reverse side this time, letting that first spot open up so that Mark and Johnny can get in cleanly. There's the spread from first to second. Meanwhile, Glenn, Dale Jarrettson. Yes, he is, Eli. They're pitting just a little bit early. Dale did not like that last set of tires. Remember, under that last caution, he was one of the cars stayed on the track for track position, so his tires were getting worn. He's glad to get those off. As I said, he did not like them. It's a four-tire change. He's down and away in about 19.2 seconds. That's a good stop. That'll help him. The best thing that can happen to all these guys in the back stretch is for this thing to go green so they can pit under green flag conditions. Can't remember Kyle Petty with whom we're riding now has the fresh tires. What a great shot down the back straightaway. You can see Bodine there in the seven as they head down. If you want to know what a great race car driver gets a few of, this is it right here. This is as close as driving that car. That's a great shot. Glenn Jarrett just made a very valid point that we want to make sure we make note of, and that is when the guys on the back stretch pit under green flag conditions, they are at no disadvantage right. when compared to the guys who pit on the front stretch. It is only under caution flag conditions. And even today, NASCAR is trying to help that out. They're speeding the caution car up to try to get the cars to go a little bit faster between the start-finish line area and the back stretch. That helps, but it doesn't solve the problem. We are at lap 192 of 393. Pit stops expected any moment now. All the leaders came in at lap 108. We're now at the same 192. Those that were on the back of the lead lap were already a lap down, came in again at lap number 128 as part of that Darrell Waltrip caution. And look at that, Dick Trickle in the 90 with new tires, gets around the number six, the race leader, Mark Martin. Jeff Green in the number 29 behind him. Of course, Trickle, remember, had a top five finish here a year ago. Hey, did you count up the other day when they named NASCAR's 50 all-time great drivers, of which Buddy Baker is one? Did you realize that 13 of the 50 have at one time in their career driven for Judy Donlevy? 
13 of the 50. I tell you what, I wouldn't give anything for the experience. What a nice guy. I come back after I was injured in 1988, so for Jimmy Don Levy, probably as much fun as they ever had. Look at Jeff Gordon down under Jimmy Spencer here. That's fourth place. He finally got his car dialed in. He's been very, very much a factor for the last little bit, and the car is able to run a little bit lower than these other cars. If you remember, he won the race here last year by being able to run the middle part of the racetrack when everybody else was trying to run the bottom and the very top. Three top ten finishes here in the last six races. Two wins and a fourth place finish for Jeff Ford. That's sixth place Rick Mast in the 75. Next time by will be at halfway. It'll be halfway home for Mark Martin the next time they come to the stripe. Bit of an overcast day. Kenny Irwin will make his pit stop. As the leader comes to the stripe, a $10,000 bonus from Gatorade for leading it halfway. The Gatorade Front Runner Award goes to Mark Martin. Rusty Wallace, though, he's pulling down. He's about 10 car lengths behind your leader there, Mark Martin. Johnny Benson pitch. Steve Burns. And we heard their adjustments. They're going to do this with air pressure for Johnny Benson. They're going to take a half a pound in the right rear, take a half a pound out of the left rear. So it's just a half a pound of air pressure either way for Johnny Benson. The sixth car of Mark Martin also on his way. Eli, as you said, Ted Musgrave came in a few laps ago, opening up for Johnny Benson. Now Mark Martin is going to come in. Oh, oh almost. Mark Martin had to overshoot the pitch. Johnny Benson was on his way out. That was not an example of good teamwork. Bad timing. They're going to service Mark Martin's car. Mike Garrett, the jack man. They've got the right side done. Sean Parker changing tires. Along with Mark Robertson. A tough break for Mark Martin. As he was coming in, Johnny Benson was leading. And Mark Martin is finally done. 18.4 seconds. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. The lead now rests in the hands of the flying deuces. Mark Armstrong and Bill Wilburn going to work on the right side. They know if they can get Rusty out fast, they will take over the lead. No change is expected for the Miller Life Ford. Rusty said the car was a little bit tight, but I really don't want to chance it and make any changes and possibly go the wrong way. The car is pretty decent at this moment, and he is down and away a great stop. The 24 car coming down here road, the Rainbow Warriors, going to make some service on Jeff Gordon, a four-tire stop. As you recall, they've been battling a loose condition all day long in the Rainbow Warriors pit. Ray Everham has tried just about everything. They're now on the right side. Mike Trower and company, they'll try spring rubbers, wedge adjustments, track bar adjustments. Nothing really has seemed to work. Now they're back over on the left side now. The captain, Mike Belden, in with a second can of gas. Now let's go to Glenn Jarrett, and he's on the back stretch. And back here, Steve, uh, Earnhardt is in there making a chassis adjustment on the left rear. It's a four-tire stop. Took a, put a round of bite in the car. The car is still fighting a loose condition. Left side's up right now. Tires run down and away. 21.1 seconds. Good pit stop under green flag. And Bobby Hamilton follows him in. We get around here like to see Hamilton. This will also be a four-tire stop for Bobby Hamilton as well. Hamilton has had one of the fastest cars on the back stretch, but he started the back pedal just a little bit in the last few laps. Tony Irvin has already been in and down. Dale Jarrett pitted about uh, 10 laps ago. This should be the last of the fastest cars uh, on the back stretch to pit. Bobby Hamilton down and away in the Codex Chevrolet. His speed. And Sean Parker was hurt in that near accident between Mark Martin and Johnny Benson, his right knee. Jack Roush was just looking at it. So far, he has not received any medical attention. He's walking around with a slight limp on the right leg. Sean, you okay? What happened out there? I just, you know, 26 car was pulling out. We were coming in. It was just real close there. You okay? Yeah. Let's take a look at it again as Ricky Craven is now the leader, where Benson is the 26 pulling out. You see Martin coming in. And you see, just jumping across, and there goes Johnny, just brushing Sean there at the right rear of the automobile. Fortunately, he's okay. Everybody came out unscathed. Benson is running in eighth. 
Mark Martin is running fifth, and there is the race leader, Ricky Craven. Remember that Ricky came in early. He was the first man to pit at lap 158, so he's on a pit sequence of his own. But for now, it's given him the race lead. Radio communications are provided by Racing Radios. For all your business and racing communications needs, as well as scanners and frequency lists, call on Racing Radios at 1-800-669-1522. A change in the lead here at Rockingham. Dale Jarrett just seconds ago swept by Ricky Craven, brought the two of Rusty Wallace with him. There's Johnny Benson running in the seventh spot. And again, the incident on Pitt Road, buddy, was scary looking. It was that. You can see the guy right here, he runs across. Right here, he decides, I got to get to that right rear. Right there, he got bumped. That could have been ugly. Thank God everybody's okay. And the race continues on now as the man in front is Rusty Wallace. He has just made the move around Dale Jarrett. So Rusty Wallace, who led before during the exchange of pit stops at lap number 198, retakes the lead here at lap 209. And guys, we talked about it around 1 o'clock or so. Rusty Wallace is just too good here at this racetrack not to be a factor as the afternoon continues. Plus, he had a great test program here. Got to spend two full days of testing before this race and was really pleased with the test as far as the way the car felt. And they've stepped up the program in the shop as well. They put a new chassis dyno in every time they run a race. They bring that car in. They put it on the chassis dyno, see how it's working. They've added still more people. It's one of the most talent-rich teams in all of Winston Cup. Now, buddy, folks know that you've done a lot of off-season testing for and with Rusty Wallace. Is this one of the tracks where you had a chance to shake the car down to or just Daytona? No, I was in uh, Talladega, and they were down here testing at the same time. I was down with Jeremy Mayfield doing a little running down there, and uh, every time we talked to Rusty, he was really high about this car at this racetrack. And he's happy right now by four-tenths of a second. He's got the lead on the number six of Mark Martin. Mark Martin is the leader for much of the day, but now it's Rusty Wallace. 217 live at the Rock. Russell William Wallace shows the way. There's Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like his stomach is on <laughs> I don't believe you said that. <laughs> Looks like his stomach is on <laughs> Oh, boy. We have a good time up here. Uh, Rusty's having a great time on the track. Here's a guy, if you're just joining us, who was languishing middle of the field early in the day, has now worked himself up with the help from Robin Pemberton and the boys, getting the car just right, and he's now leading the race here at Rockingham. That's a good move for Jeff Gordon. He's been up to the front, he's been back, he's been to the front again, and here he is battling with Dick Trickle. Trickle is just ahead of him in the 90, and that's for position. That's for sixth spot on your screen. I talked to Trickle this morning, first thing he told me, he said, you know we've had a horrible week here. We qualified fairly good. We had one good lap out of the whole week. He said, we put the car exactly like it was last race, and he said, it, if it works, it works. If it don't, we'll go to the rear. You see, it's working pretty well. You want to see some experience? The guy that owns that number 90 car, Juni Dunleavy, we were talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah. Today is his 745th Winston Cup start. Trickle, it's his 254th Winston Cup start. Trickle's in his 40th year. Juni, his 49th year. Remarkable, isn't it? It really is. Two better champions you won't find. And here goes Jeff Gordon again. That's four position. He won sixth from Dick Trickle. <laughs> The way Trickle's fighting him back, he might be Trickle's age before he gets by him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Looks oh, like he's got him, buddy. Got him. He put a slide job on him there, coming out of the corner. Why don't we check out the Wrangler mid-race report brought to you by Wrangler. Cowboy cut jeans. Three cautions, lap 77 for Robert Presley, lap 107 for David Green, lap 127, Darrell Waltrip, because of problems that Greg Sachs had at the time, putting some oil down on the racetrack. Average speed having been slowed just a bit, and those in the garage area, Ricky Rudd, Green, and Waltrip. Robert Presley had been in for much of the day. There's Dale Earnhardt, 19th position, the number three car. Winner of the Daytona 500, Kenny Wallace, right behind him in 20th position now. Kenny starts.
start at second. The Burton, this race went green. And the Burton brothers right behind them. Of course, Ward's won here. He attacks the North Carolina Motor Speedway. Ward Burton does. There's Rusty Wallace trying to put Joe Dimitschek into the lap down. Joe's already a lap down. He'd go two in arrears if Rusty can get by him. We're coming right back. It's a half-second lead. Rusty Wallace left of your screen to Mark Martin on the right. And there you see the number of laps led by the different manufacturers today. And, Dick, I think it's pretty much according to what folks expected coming in, not knowing how the new rules would take shape this afternoon. Well, before Daytona, they were all concerned about the forest having so much downforce that it wouldn't be competitive at Daytona. And, frankly, the only guy who had a Taurus at Daytona that led any laps is this fellow, Rusty Wallace, the only four Taurus that led the Daytona 500. But that downforce plays a big role here at Rockingham, where you want as much grip as you can possibly get. The Taurus does have terrific downforce numbers. Mark Martin in second place as we ride with him. I was just fixing to say, Mark Martin is hanging right on the bottom of the racetrack and closing in on the two-car Rusty Wallace as we speak. He pulled it down to about a 10-car length lead, you see, as they head down into turn three. Our friends at Duralube with tomorrow's technology today, bringing you the aerial shots high above the North Carolina Motor Speedway. And Rusty's in a little traffic now. We've got Schrader in the 33, running in 37th spot. The 44 to his inside, Kyle Petty, laps down in 28th position. And it'll allow Mark Martin to close right in on him. Schrader and Wallace, very good friends off the racetrack. It's also allowing Dale Jarrett to close in just behind this group. You'll see DJ right there. He's got Joe Nimitzek to negotiate first. Glenn, it's got to help. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've been checking times back here, and uh, right now, Johnny Benson and Jeff Gordon and Jeremy Layfield are the quickest cars on the racetrack. So that takes you on the cars on the back stretch and in the top 20. Dale Earnhardt is 19th. Bobby Hamilton, 16th. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bobby Labonte is 12th. Ernie Irvin is 8th, and Dale Jarrett is uh, running third right now. So you got five of those guys from back here in the top 20. They're all doing a pretty good job. Rush is following up on one of the storylines of the day about how that back pit area works to one's detriment or potentially uh, no factor should the day have stayed under total green. The Napa Rundown brought to you by Napa. They keep America running, and they've got all the numbers for you here this afternoon. You know, maybe another storyline that we should have put up at the beginning of the show is the resurgence of one Rusty Wallace, who last week scored his best ever finish in the Daytona 500, and today is looking absolutely terrific. This guy has not led a lap here at Rockingham since October of 1995, despite the fact that he's the winningest active driver here at Rockingham. He's got it together now, doesn't he? Only won one time last year, but this year's looking like a whole bunch better. You know, Michael Waltrip run very well today, Eli. Yeah. All day long, you see Terry Labonte in the five there, fighting the inside of the racetrack, Michael Rim riding around the racetrack. Good battle there. Michael Waltrip, interestingly, has posted only two top 10 finishes in the last 21 races. Right now, Matt, he's in 16th spot battling with Terry Labonte. Eli, they're expecting a good season from Michael Waltrip and the 21 crew. Eddie Wood told me they've redone their entire organization as far as their cars go. They've got Chip Lane building their chassis and bodies out of victory, and they're using a route power plant for the entire season. They felt that may be where they were lacking a little bit last year. They feel now they have the total package to make a run for Michael Walters' first career Winston Cup victory. Michael had a second place finish at Pocono years ago as his career best to this point. Eighth, ninth position, tenth position up for grabs right there on the screen now. Dick Trickle in the 90. That rainbow colored 36, Ernie Irvin, the 12 on the right of the screen, Jeremy Mayfield. They're battling for position. Seventh spot up for grabs in that exchange. The 41, Steve Grissom, he's a lap down after oh. repeated pit stops. Did you see Ernie Irvin just in in the 36? The back end of the car got very wormy as he got below the white line on the flat part of the racetrack. It made the car kick out. I thought he was about to spin out. It's fun to watch when the car is wormy, though. He's one of the few guys who can really hang on to a loose race car and still go fast. Garen 
heat. He's not afraid of it as a lot of other drivers are. No doubt about that. There goes Ernie to the inside of Dick Trickle with help from Jeremy Field. Three wide. They thought about it. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> I tell you what. He's exciting to watch. He's the star of the future, no doubt about it. Now behind those cars, you see the red machine cutting its way through traffic. That Ricky Craven, he has made stops for uh, tires here seconds ago. He was in at lap 237. Remember, he's on his own pit stop sequence. So he dropped way back. He's now taking on the tires. At the 37th position, Craven will start coming back to the front. And look at that old trickle. Holding off Mayfield and Ernie Irvin. But again, not to be surprised. Trickle finished fifth here a year ago. Young Trickle. Drives like a kid. Yep. There's Rick Mass started on the Bud Pole today. He's in 13. That's 75 car. The best Pontiac is just ahead of it. And there's the leader in the middle of your screen, Rusty Wallace, having to deal with traffic. He's got Brett Bodine and Sterling Marlin to deal with. You know, Sterling fought his way back at the lead lap again. He's in jeopardy of going to lap down again. He really wrestled in that car around the racetrack. Very, very loose in the center part of the corner. Sterling's at 24. Riding with Ted Musgrave at 26 as you go back towards the front. The Winston car there, that's Jimmy Spencer, the 36 Irvin. There's Craven again. Remember, with the fresh tires, he's just been in five laps ago. The seven is Jeff Bodine. He's running ninth. Jimmy Spencer there in the 23. He saw a 2 3 up across up. He said, I got to get in on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's riding her hard through there. Steve Burns, meanwhile, is checking in with Tom Baldwin. Tommy's down there with uh, Dick Trickle as his charge for the day. Eli, as you said, they had a great run here in October. Tommy, you guys dropped far, as far back as 28th. Now you're in the top 10. Tell us about your strategy. Well, uh, we don't have that good of a car to first down in last 30 laps in our run, so I figure we short stop them that last stop, and hopefully the times will average out about lap 50 to 80. Uh, we're starting to lose a little bit of time right now. Um, probably about 30 more laps till we come in again, but we're having a good run today, with Holly Myers for Torres. Uh, hopefully we'll end up in the top 10 today. Okay, Tommy. Up to you, Eli. Tom Baldwin, Jr., the son of the great Northeast modified ace Tom Baldwin from Long Island, the number 7 NY that he has made so very popular over the years. Rusty Wallace still leads. There he is, having put the 11 of Brett Bodine into the lap down. Mark Martin is second. Then Johnny Benson, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jarrett. We are back at The Rock for the GM Goodwrench Service Plus 400. It was at lap 107 when David Green found his way into the wall, joining the list of retirees for the afternoon. Then problems on a pit stop, lap 197. Two Roush teams nearly collide, and an injury that proves not to be serious. Lap 207, Dale Jarrett gets the lead. Two laps later, later Rusty Wallace takes it away. That's how quickly things change here at Rockingham, live on TNN Motorsports. Welcome back, everybody, with Buddy Baker, Dick Bergman, Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum, and Steve Burns. I'm Eli Gold. Rusty Wallace, the race leader, has led the last 45 laps. But that man in the middle of your screen, Jeff Gordon, is on the stopwatch, the quickest car on the racetrack right now. Unbelievable how he's picked it up. He has moved himself right into contention now in the third spot. Jeff Gordon, without a doubt, is much quicker than anyone else on the racetrack. And the stories we talked about earlier, that's how they're being updated with Johnny Benson there. Pontiac dominating normally. Well, now Ernie Irvin, the best Pontiac of the lot. He is running in the 10th spot. Right behind him, though, is John Andretti in 11th. So two Pontiacs together. Middle of your screen, the 36 and the 43. Got Bobby Hamilton next in line. Boy, Ernie's car really Ernie. kicking out of the corners. If you want to know what loose is, just watch that 36 of Ernie Irvin. He got completely sideways coming out of turn two just now. He's running very high right now, trying to use as much racetrack as he can. As he starts under, you see, he cannot make the move underneath the car to pass uh, Jeff Burton there in the middle part of the corner. And that's the difference between a good race driver and a great race driver. A great race driver can still hang on to it when he's got a car that's as loose as that one is. 
pit stops beginning for some at lap 256 as Ernie wants ninth spot and no gets it from Dick Trickle for the moment, but can't quite hang on. Kyle Petty is on the pit lane for service at 257. Dick Trickle had that car about halfway to sideways. <laughs> Nobody can do anything with Dick Trickle. I'm just watching Ernie Irvin, though. He's a treat to watch in a loose race car. That thing looks like a kite without a tail on it in the middle part of the corner. <laughs> and he just keeps right on digging. I'll still never forget the telecast here on TNN last year at Hickory when Dick Trickle got to victory lane. Had uh, an emotional, emotional day. That's all a battle for position there on your screen from ninth on back. That man, Dick Trickle of the Heilig Myers Ford in ninth and everybody else battling behind him. Meanwhile, up front, sixth and seventh spot, Jeremy Mayfield in the 12, the 94, Bill Elliott, that again for position. All of these guys, though, two miles an hour slower than Jeff Gordon. Gordon continues as the quickest car on the racetrack right now. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm watching him and as these guys battle back here for position. You can see, Elliot, these two cars are evenly matched right now. One wants to move ahead, the other one won't let him. So, Betty there having a battle. Kenny Schrader just ahead there in the 33. Two laps down, remember, in 34th. But Mayfield in the 12 and Elliott in the 94 have to do something to dispose of them. Well, there's how you keep a battle going. One goes high, one goes low. Right back to the same old business of trying to get by. Meanwhile, there is the good battle for second spot that evaporated as soon as Jeff Gordon got to Mark Martin. That's how quickly Gordon is running now in the 24. Took that car right into second place without any trouble. Mark Martin realizes right now that his tires are going away a little bit. He's hanging on until the pit stop. These guys, though, are one and nine tenth seconds behind the race leader, Rusty Wallace. Under green. Taking a look behind the scenes at what makes TNN go. We're coming right back. Rusty Wallace is the race leader. He took over most recently in lap 209. We are now at lap 265. Jeff Gordon is running in the second spot. And pit stops have begun for many of the race teams. Over the last few moments, after rubbing the wall, Chad Little came in for a stop. But we had no caution. He just bounced off the wall and kept on going. We have seen Kenny Irwin in. Bobby Labonte has been in. Kyle Petty, Hunt Strickland, Joe Nimichek. Let's go back to pit road. Johnny and Jenny already in his good stall. Robbie Lumis and the guys going to work. A four-tire stop for John Andretti. He, too, has been having problems today, struggling. Now let's go to Steve Burns. And that Ted Musgrave is in. And as we talked about earlier, this is teamwork. Musgrave getting in so that Mark Martin and Johnny Benson can have an unobstructed shot onto their pit lane. So Ted Musgrave in, and we're awaiting Johnny Benson and Mark Martin momentarily. Martin and Benson are third and fourth. Musgrave in 25th position. Here comes Dick Trickle. He'll slow just a bit. So does Jeff Burton now begin to make himself known on the pit lane. Burton will come in at lap 268. Eli, this is incredible. Jeff Gordon has figured out something. He and Ray Everham to get this car handling. He was completely out of the race. Now he's running Rusty Wallace down. He's only two car lengths back. And Dale Earnhardt is in. Glenn? Yes, he is, Eli. Earnhardt has come in. I was just looking at the scoreboard at lap 268. This is way earlier than I thought that Earnhardt would pit. Also back here is uh, Bobby Hamilton. He's in the pit. Four times for Earnhardt. Uh, Jesse adjustment by air pressure. I'm watching Hamilton. Same thing. Hamilton is down in a way. And here goes Earnhardt. Wow. About 22 and a half seconds for Earnhardt. Those stops again taking place under green, which negates the disadvantage that those teams on the back straightaway would have. And here again, with Rusty Wallace being challenged, Jeff Gordon grabs the lead. 
as they go through the corner and come back to the stripe. That quickly, it all changes. As we told you, Gordon has been consistently the fastest car on the racetrack. The lead swaps at lap 270. You can see the cars that's been in the pit, pit so uh, they're much, much quicker right now than the cars that are out there hanging on like the 24 car Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. Let's go back to Glenn Jarrett. And Dale Jarrett has brought the uh, Ford Credit Ford in the Another pit stop, four times down and away. Wow, 18.2 seconds for Jared. Also, we might want to tell you that Earnhardt's car is running a little bit hot. Here's Matt. The leaders on pit road. Rusty Wallace will be first in his box, going to work with Bill Wilburn and Mark Hollywood Armstrong. While Jeff Gordon hits his marks. Mike Trower going to work in the right rear of Gordon. No chassis adjustments expected for Rusty Wallace. He likes the way his car is handling. Bill Wilburn on to the left side. Also on the left side of Gordon's car. The captain, Mike Belden, for the 24 car. With the second can of fuel, he's in. The 24 car is down in the way, and he will beat the two car off your road. And caution is on the speedway in the middle of the pit stops. A couple of cars get together in turns three and four. That is Joe Nimichek. You've also had Kenny Wallace involved. Steve Burns is on pit road. Well, Eli, bad break. The 6 and 26, they came in just as that caution flag came out. They did not stop. They dropped it back in gear and went back out. So we'll have to see if, in fact, they have lost a lap. It's all in the timing. We talked about it earlier. Kenny Wallace going to the garage. That's Joe Nimichek's car up against the wall. Guys, let's take a look and see what happened out there in turns three and four. Let's watch. You can see contact there between the two cars. You see the cars up against the wall. Kenny Wallace there, the 81. Nimichek in the 42 and the 16 of Ted Musgrave. They made contact in the center part of the corner. Across the racetrack comes Nemechek and into the inside wall. Kenny Wallace just an innocent victim there with no place to go. So Kenny Wallace to the garage. Ted Musgrave, you see, going to the garage. Rick Mast is the new race leader. As caution is on the speedway, for the fourth time today, it comes out at lap 274. And how the complexion of this race may just have changed. Call new LCI residential long distance customers receive 30 minutes of free domestic calling and the World Card Plus calling card featuring participating NASCAR drivers. Don't delay. Call now 1 888 Team LCI. We are back here at The Rock. You're looking at Jimmy Howell, the chief starter for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series today. He and Rodney Wise splitting the responsibilities this year. You see where Joe Nemechek's car is there on the apron of the racetrack, and they're still clearing it away. That's where the teams would normally begin their entrance towards Pitt Road. And because of Nemechek's car sitting there and all of the cleanup crew, they are not opening either the front or the back pit areas yet. So nobody has made a stop. Rick Mast has not stopped yet. Jeff Bodine, who is in second, has not stopped yet. And everything else now is being re reviewed, I guess, the best way to make sure we know exactly where everybody is. Watch from Kyle Petty's car what he saw. he avoids any trouble and right. there you see the numbers on the day the cars that are officially out uh, that number has grown just a bit Waltrip Green Rudd Presley add to it Nimichek and Wallace at this point Mass Bodine Martin Benson certainly are on the lead lap everything else now being reassessed and double-checked by NASCAR to make sure they know exactly where everybody is. In a situation like this, when a caution comes out in the middle of the sequence of green flag stops, it really can give the scorers a hard time. So they're just reconfirming everything. And now the pit lane opens. Glenn Jarrett. Guys, I think the, I think they have waved Rusty Wallace and, uh, and Jeff Gordon around uh, in the air. They're at the back of the field. They had already made their pit stop. They should have already, they should have been ahead of those cars because they were the guys leading the race. I think they moved them almost.
just a lap ahead of the field. I'm sure they'll get it straightened out. Steve? Hey, Glenn, there's a confusion here in the Jack Rouse pits as well as Mark Martin and Johnny Benson make their stop. Just to repeat, they came in. They're about to make their stop, so the caution came out, so they went back out on the racetrack. As they finish their service, let's go to Matt Yoko. On the top of your screen, you can see Rick Maz just finished getting his service. It was a four-tire pit stop, a good stop by the Remington Ford crew. His car was a little bit tight. They adjusted with air pressure. He was moved to the front with all the pit stop shuffle. We are going to take a break. One thing we do know for sure, Rick Mast and the next eight men in line are on the lead lap. Everything being rechecked will go green as soon as we come back. GNN Motorsports live coverage of the Goodwrench Service Plus 400 is being brought to you by the more than 1,750 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by NASCAR 98 from EA Sports, now available for your PlayStation. Welcome back, everybody, as we ride along with Bobby Labonte here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. He is in 20th spot. Here's the rundown right now. NASCAR showing the top nine on the lead lap as of this moment, with Rusty Wallace having reassumed the lead, what with the pit stops moments ago of the other fellows who had been ahead of him. That included Mark Martin and Rick Mast. So Rusty Wallace being shown as the race leader, Jeff Gordon second, Rick Mast in third. He did not pit before that caution he fit it after it then you have Jeff Bodine Mark Martin Jeremy Mayfield Johnny Benson Bill Elliott and Jimmy Spencer then Glenn you're gonna have a ton of guys including your brother and Bobby Hamilton and Trickle and Ernie Irvin at the tail end of the lead lap yeah also uh, add to that uh, I believe Michael Walter Terry Labonte Dale Earnhardt Ward Burton. What has happened when these guys pitted under green, they came out on the racetrack just behind Rick Mast. Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon came out on the racetrack just ahead of Rick Mast. Of course, we saw Mark Martin and Johnny Benson uh, go into pits and go back out before they stopped. So what has happened, that's put those cars, Dale Jarrett and all those other cars, at the tail end of the lead lap. They're going to have to get another caution or run mighty hard to, uh, to catch back up. Now let's go to the front stretch pits. Well, Glenn, taking a look at the 26 and the 6, the crewmen are looking at the tires. They're very happy with the tire wear. On that pit stop, both the 26 and the 6, Johnny Benson and Mark Martin, they adjusted air pressure to tweak the car for the closing laps. What do you have, Matt Yoakum? Well, out here in uh, the Rainbow Warriors pits, I just talked to Ray Abernham. He says this is kind of deja vu to last year. If you recall, the 88 car, Dale Jarrett, dominated. They worked all day on the handling of the Rainbow Warriors from a 24 DuPont Chevy, got it up to the front in the late stages, and took home the victory. That's the game plan today. They worked on their cars a little bit tight, so they worked on it with air pressure on the last pit stop. Ray says the car is A-OK, -okay, and they should have something for the two car, they believe. Eli? The scoring has long since been settled. Right now, we're a bit of a delay while track cleanup takes place. The jet blower is out there cleaning the racing surface. Back to green in a moment. This broadcast is sponsored by Featherlight Trailers, the official trailers of NASCAR, CART, IRL, and a major sponsor of the NHRA. Call Featherlight for your trailer needs at 800-800-1230 or 319-547-6000. We're getting set to go back to green. Rusty Wallace, the race leader, is ninth in line behind eight other teams that are on the tail end of the lead lap. Green flag is in the air. Again, the man in the middle of that gaggle of cars Rusty Wallace, the number two, he is the race leader. The others ahead of him are on the tail end of the lead lap. There's Wallace, the leader in the two. Jeff Gordon, the 24, that rainbow-colored car is second. Rick Mast in the 75 is third. Jeff Bodine in car seven is fourth. Mark Martin is fifth. Jeremy Mayfield, sixth. Johnny Benson is seventh. Bill Elliott is eighth. Jimmy Spencer is ninth. Oh. The good three-wide battle heads to the corner. I'm telling you right now that these guys are going at it like it's the last lap around this place. And the reason for that is so many of these cars trying to stay in the lead lap. They're fighting very, very hard on the inside of the racetrack. You see your lead cars up there. Rusty Wallace now trying to get by Terry Labonte. Terry in the five is one of those drivers trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. So is the 30 for Derek Cope. He's to the inside of the two of Rusty Wallace. All boxed in there. The race leader, no place to go. Traffic all around him. They're at lap 287.
37 of 393. Jeff Gordon in the 24 there to head down into turn one. Now, what he can use right now is that Rusty go up there, get everybody aware. They're giving these guys uh, a look at the lead car as he comes up through there. Jeff Gordon can take his time and just kind of follow Rusty through there. Not a bit. Oh, he's quick, though. Look at him. Come on the bottom side here. Derek Cope to the inside, not wanting to go all out down. And Jeff Gordon takes the lead. Gordon uses Derek Cope as the pick and takes the lead on the low side of the racetrack here at lap 289. Jeff Bodine got by, too. Bodine has just taken second spot in that blue and white number seven car. So Jeff Gordon now showing the way. Derek Cope did go a lap down in that exchange in the 18th position. Here's Jeff Bodine now working to the inside as we are just 103 laps from the finish. What's the pit strategy, guys? What are you hearing? Eli, I've pulled a number of crew chiefs up and down pit road. Most of it can go 84 to 85 green flag laps on fuel, but most everyone is looking at the possibility of short pitting like we've talked about all day, maybe around 40 laps into this run to make it a 40 to 45 lap run to the finish. That, of course, is barring a caution flag. If you're just joining us, we have had four caution periods today. Lap 77, 107, 127, and then lap 274. And the leader is the 24, Jeff Gordon. Ahead of him, the 11, Brett Bodine. He's already two laps down. Then ahead of that white car, that red and orange machine, Terry Labonte, he is on the tail end of the lead lap and trying to stay there. He looked really carefully at Jeff Gordon's car in that tight shot. You saw he's got a pretty good sized dent in the left rear fender. That would have hurt him at Daytona last week, but it won't hurt him here at all. You see that fender sort of tucked up underneath there. He's contacted somebody. The good part about that, that damage has been done for about 100 laps right now. I noticed it earlier in the race, so it's not a problem for him. And across the top of the screen, back to position number seven on that rundown. Terry Labonte, those cars on the lead lap, 18th on back. Now at least one lap down. And watch this. Mark Mark left of the screen in the sixth. Jeremy Mayfield. Bill Elliott's there. Rick Mast is there. That's fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Jeremy Mayfield trying everything he can to get by Mark Mark in the sixth car there. There's nose to tail as they come off the corner. Derek Cope a lap. Oh! Contact. And you saw Derek Cope waving his hand there in the air. Not that he was slowing down. I think uh, he was just a tad perturbed. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's had race cars all over him since that restart. Cope's doing the best he can to try to pull back the thundering herd, but everybody has taken a shot at him, and a bunch of guys have gotten by, and that's got to be frustrating. Looking out of the fourth place car of Mark Martin, heading back towards Mayfield. That white and blue Ford Taurus coming your way. And now here's Jeff Gordon trying to put Earnhardt a lap down. Dale is in 16th position. You see the five, Terry Labonte has already been lapped by his corporate teammate. I'm sure Earnhardt will just move over and oh, let him sure go. Well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Earnhardt struggles so hard to stay in the lead lap today. He has to be, feel very frustrated with the turn of events there that got him on the tail end of the lead lap on the restart like this. There's Jeff Bodine running in second spot. Interestingly, having trouble now has finally gotten around his brother, Brett Bodine, in the 11th. They were running nose to tail there, and it took Jeff a while to get around him. Meanwhile, let me oh. Give him a little shot. Wait yeah. a minute. And that will allow Terry Labonte to get back on the tail of the lead lap to the outside. Earnhardt stays here. And here comes Jeff Bodine in the seventh. He wants to lead here at Rockingham. A Chevy against the Ford. Did Gordon just Earnhardt? Earnhardt. Uh, yeah, I think he did. <laughs> I'll tell you, the winner there, though, was Earnhardt. Right now, Jeff Gordon's got a very, very fast race car. He needs to regroup here and get himself back on track. The new leader is Jeff Bodine. If he can hang on and get back to the stripe by inches, Jeff Bodine leads lap 299. And here's Rusty right in the thick of it, too. Oh, man, this is good. Well, Gordon's down there where he can't touch the throttle right now to come off the corner wide. Oh, oh. see this. He moved right over there and made a little contact with Rusty Wallace coming out of turn two. 
getting physical. This with a hundred to go. Bodine, Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Jeremy Mayfield. There's the good battle for second spot. There's the spread from first back to second. Wallace in the two, Gordon in the 24. What's happened to Gordon right now, running that low line and not being able to get a good clean line off the uh, corner. He burned his tires a little bit, got him a little too hot and really stick well. And he's going to have to run a few laps here to get his tires back to the same temperature as the other cars that he's running with. Ted Musgrave is back in the race. He's 32 laps down. Robert Presley back in the race. He's 205 laps down as you look high overhead. The Rock, Duralube with tomorrow's technology today, bringing you the overhead pictures. What a scramble there for position. Rusty Wallace, Gordon, Mark Martin, you're riding with him. He wants to grab a position. Boy, Jeff Gordon's car, just when he ran into Earnhardt, it was like something went wrong to the car because he is not able to keep the speed that he had before that impact. Hit him pretty good. Fans just eating it up here at Rockingham. Hope you're enjoying it on TNN Motorsports, the first of many, many telecasts this year here on TNN. This network bringing you more NASCAR racing in 1998 than any other network. We're so happy to be able to do that. You have Bodine and two team cars there. Rusty Wallace in second. Jeremy Mayfield in third right now. These two cars run this way in Daytona. They have to feel good about their team effort this year. Up front, Jeff Bodine is the race leader. He was eighth in this event one year ago. There's still time, though, for a lot of guys to come battling back. Welcome to the battle for the lead here at The Rock. Rusty Wallace, Jeff Bodine. Wallace the two, Bodine the seven. We're at lap 307. While that battle goes on, here comes Wallace's corporate teammate, the 12. That's Jeremy Mayfield, buddy, like you were talked. And a tough, tough break for racer Rick. Our pole sitter, Rick Mast, on Pitt Road. Matt, looks like a, a flat tire, huh? Bad luck for Rick Mast, a flat left front tire on the 75 car. They're gonna make this a four tire pit stop because they can go to the finish after this stop. So they're already here, they said, let's do four. As you can see, the guys coming around the left side of the car. Boy, tough luck for Rick Mast. That is a heartbreaker for Rick Mast. Meanwhile, this great battle for the lead continues. You know, we made a comment about Jeff Gordon. He regrouped. Look at Mayfield. Oh, my. Jeremy Mayfield saw the opening, and he's gone. Jeremy Mayfield saw the opening, and the youngster snookers the veterans. Was that a move or what? The top two cars just go up the racetrack. Mayfield says, okay, you're going to leave the bottom open. I'll take it, and he did. Man, I was talking about Jeff Gordon regrouping and getting back in the contention here. He's the fourth car in that shot, and Jeremy Mayfield just rocketed by all turn two. And I gotta wonder if there really is anything wrong with Gordon's car. I wondered if he just sort of backed out of it. What do you think, buddy? If you ever lose your temper a little bit, it takes a little bit of time to get settled back down. Matt, what are you hearing down there? Anything wrong? Ray Evernham, the master coach, coaching Jeff. Hey, back off. Let's cool down those tires. We know battling the seven and the two car that we heated up the tires. Let's let them cool back down and get ourselves back into our rhythm. So he's coaching him on the two-way radio. Meanwhile, Jeremy Mayfield needed no coaching. He saw the opening to the inside, and he's gotten gone. Let's take a look at this again, buddy. This is classic. This is textbook. Talk about aggression. He's the third car there, the 12. You see the two fighting high there? Look at Mer Mayfield. Looks like he's in second gear compared to everybody else. His room out that corner. 112 career start in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. And Jeremy Mayfield is showing the way. Kind of reminiscent of the move Todd Bodine made here at a Bush Grand National race a couple of years ago. Yeah, Down driving on the, the 72 bottom. car. Yeah, three wide, and he took the win doing that. That was a super one, you might remember. You saw it here on TNN Motorsports when Todd was driving the Detroit gasket car, and he won by, what, inches over Mike Wallace, and I guess Larry Pearson was in that finish, yep. too. Yep. What a spectacular run that was. You know, Pranifus uh, had a great team here, and then with the Penske influence on this, and they really do, they... 
They share every note. If Rusty Wallace has something that's great, they do everything back and forth there. And it's really given Jeremy Mayfield an opportunity that most race car drivers would never have. His career best finish came a week ago in the Daytona 500. He's trying to improve on it by two positions. Jeremy Mayfield leads at the Rock. For this great battle for second place, Jeff Bodine outside, Jeff Gordon inside. Rusty Wallace watching and give it to Gordon. Second spot, changing hands right there. Bodine is now third, Wallace stays in fourth, Mark Martin is in fifth. Meanwhile, Jeremy Mayfield continues as the race leader, but he can't put Dale Earnhardt a lap down. Earnhardt in 15th, staying right there. Little bump and go on the racetrack. Getting a little physical out there. Oh, yeah. See Steve Park there a lap down, but he's trying to make a run to the front to get back on the lead lap. He's in the number one car there. Great job. Meanwhile, we've been talking all day about the back pit area and what that means. Does it hurt you? Does it not? Does it even out as the afternoon goes? Glenn, how have those numbers been going? Well, right right now, Eli, Dale Garrett is the top car on the, on the uh, back stretch, uh, followed by Ernie Irvin, uh, Bobby Hamilton, and Dale Earnhardt. All those cars are just ahead of Jeremy Mayfield. As you said, Mayfield can, can't quite put Earnhardt a lap down. Meanwhile, Garrett and Irvin and Hamilton have pulled away from Mayfield. They desperately need for a caution to come out. They got cars up there that could very well contend for the win for at least for top 10 positions, but they've lost so much track position on that uh, caution uh, pit exchange a while ago that they're dead. They just need a caution play to catch up. They got fast race cars, but they're over a half, way over a half a lap behind. Here comes Jeff Gordon now into the picture. Eli, you're exactly right. He's as fast as he was just before that caution right now. He is running Jeremy Mayfield down. He's picked up some 10 car laps in the past two laps. And you gotta wonder if Mayfield has hurt his tires in this effort to get by Dale Earnhardt. Lap after lap, Mayfield has tried to get by him on the bottom side and Earnhardt's held him off. And meanwhile, here's Gordon closed in. He was just cooling it back there. Remember we heard from the guys downstairs that Ray Everham had said, let those tires cool. You know, I hit on that. Once you burn those tires, it takes two or three, four laps to get them back to the same temperature as the cars you're racing with. That's the lead battle. Not Earnhardt in the three. He's in 15th on the tail end of the lead lap. But Jeremy Mayfield, former rookie of the year in the ARCA Fondo Marhide series. Former go-kart racer. Former fabricator. Late model stock car driver at the Kentucky Motor Speedway. There's Ray Effernham watching. Top of the war wagon. Oh, this is getting interesting now. <laughs> oh, we had one more. I found it interesting for the last 20 laps. These guys are really going. Look at this battle right here. That's right behind them for third and fourth, and here's the lead. Here goes Gordon. He had the lead for 10 laps. Lost it. Gets it right back Gordon is again leading here at Rockingham with 67 laps to go. Boy, the Chevrolet, they, can, they can't complain about downforce on this particular Chevrolet because it's getting a job done right now. But he still has one obstacle right in front of him. You see that three car. He tried him a while ago, bumped him in the back, and really had to wait about eight or ten laps for the cover. Earnhardt still using that higher line, though. All those jobs you had talked about for Jeremy Mayfield, let's add one more. Budding Winston Cup star. Yeah. This guy, at the rate he is going, is going to be big in 98. And they don't make him any nicer no, than he's Jeremy a, Mayfield. He's a great guy. He yeah. really is. Everybody likes him. Easy going. I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. Here, yeah. Co here comes Gordon with a good run this time. He should come off the corner side by side with Earnhardt. Right. Earnhardt trying to prevent himself from going a lap down. Gordon, your race leader. Ooh. Earnhardt's in 15. Well, everybody's taking a shot at Earnhardt. So far, nobody can get it. You see where Earnhardt goes in the corner there on the high side of the racetrack. He can every bit of this thing that he can. Gordon's pinned down to the bottom side of the racetrack. It's very, very hard to pick up the throttle on the inside there and not get into the car on the outside. Again, 24 Gordon, 12 Mayfield battling for the lead. Earnhardt in the three, just trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap at 15.
three laps to go. What's going to call for happening now is Gordon, by just a bit, begins to pull away from Jeremy Mayfield. But a lot of racing remains. That is Mark Martin. He nearly tagged the wall seconds ago, and that's just been one of the more calm incidents that we've seen in the last little bit. I expect Rod Serling to show up with an episode of the Twilight Zone, the way this race has been going in the last little bit. Watch this. Let's take you back. I don't want you to miss anything. Watch Jeremy Mayfield and Dale Earnhardt. And just follow this as they worked around the racetrack. Well, this is after an incident in turn one where Jeremy Mayfield got into uh, the three car there, Dale Earnhardt. That was a little tag back going into turn three there by Earnhardt into Jeremy. So that was the second half of that, and then seconds later, Mark Martin went up and uh, was right at the wall if he didn't touch it and managed to keep himself out of major trouble and still runs in seventh spot. Robert Presley back to the garage area. Pit stops now, lap 338 beginning for Steve Grissom. And that could well settle this whole day, you know. Pit stops, they've all got to make another stop. It, that's going to be absolutely critical. Uh, they've rolled the tape back again so we can get a look at what started this whole thing. There's Earnhardt high, Mayfield low. Okay, watch him go down into turn one. Mayfield on the inside. Gets in, hits Earnhardt in the left front corner. Did he like it? I don't think so. <laughs> down the back straightaway they go. Earnhardt says, you know, it's about time to tell him. Right here, watch this. Coming through. Oh! <laughs> Hello. Kyle <laughs> Petty on pit road. Here comes Wartburg. He'll make a pit stop as well. As you see, the leader, Jeff Gordon, through all of this, he has a lead now of better than three seconds. Three and eight ten seconds now is Gordon's lead on Rusty Wallace. Jeff Bodine is third. Jeremy Mayfield fourth. Jimmy Spencer is fifth. Bill Elliott is six. Let's take you back and show you what now four seconds looks like from the Duralube overhead camera. Watch Gordon right there. And now you're looking for the blue and white car of Rusty Wallace. And there's Rusty beginning to work his way down the back straightaway. That is 4.064 seconds here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway. Talking about a reversal of fortunes, consider what has happened to Gordon at Daytona. The chip problem, the restart problem, and the shootout first, then the loss in the 125 when they pit it, and then in the Daytona 500 they lost to Motor, finished 15th in that race, and now they're leading. How many reversals of fortune since last week? Remarkable. There you see a little smoke there, I believe, from behind the uh, Johnny Benson car. And also, Dale Earnhardt is going to pitch. So is Jeff Green. Glenn? Yes, you're exactly right, Eli. And Dale uh, Earnhardt has come in. He has had to pit a little bit earlier. He ran his car really hard there, trying to stay on the lead lap. He's got most of the good out of the tires. And they're down and away. Wow, great pit stop. I got him in about 19.4 seconds. That's a good pit stop in a green condition. Yeah, super stop. As you see, the 7 of the 12, Jeff Bodine, Jeremy Mayfield, 3rd and 4th. Jimmy Spencer has made his pit stop. Brett Bodine is in as Mayfield now challenges for 3rd. Jeremy's car is able to stay way down low on the racetrack. You can see right against the white line there. Bodine on the outside keeps great momentum down the straightaway. You can see he gets off the corner a little better than Mayfield running that low line. Four yes. pit stops taking place. Brett Bodine has been in. Ricky Craven will now stop at lap 345 as you watch still the third and fourth place cars. This morning I asked Paul Andrews, crew chief for Jeremy Mayfield, how good is this? How good is your car, your team? that I think we're close to a win. Today proves it. That's fifth place on the screen now. Bill Elliott battling with Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett is in. 
Also, Bobby Hamilton is in the line. Bobby just now pulling away. Dale Jarrett has just come in to hit pit. Everybody back here changing four tires. Nobody can afford to take a chance with just trying to change two. It upsets the chassis on the car too much. The uh, left front, a little bit, little bit of trouble on the left rear there. Not bad, though. He's down and away. So that should take care of everybody back here. Ernie Irvin's been in. Bobby Labonte's been in. Bobby Hamilton. So uh, most of the contenders back here have made their final pit stop. Kenny Irwin is in for pit service. Ernie Irvin, as you heard, is in, lap 346. Jeff Burton is in, lap 347 now. All of this under green. Jeff Burton continues to lead. Rusty Wallace second. Jeff Bodine third. Jeremy Mayfield fourth. Mark Martin fifth. Bill Elliott is sixth now. I think the lead cars need to come to the pit road pretty quick here. You see all these cars that are stopped, how much quicker they are. And with just a few laps to go in this race, I think that's going to be very important. Here comes Rusty Wallace. Robin Pemberton and the boys waiting. You saw Kenny Schrader's call on pit road as Rusty went by. This is at lap 349. Van Yoakum is there. Rusty Wallace smokes the tires coming into his pit. This will be their last pit stop. Mark uh, Hollywood going to work as well as you can see everybody doing some good fast pit service on the two car. A four tire stop. They're not going to make any major chassis adjustments. Rusty likes the way the car is handling at the moment. And still more cars come down pit road. Now let's go to see Rose. Matt Jeff Bodine's in. They're going to make a chassis adjustment to the right rear. Jeff Bodine said this car coming in the mobile one colors followed by Hunt Strickland he's coming in Terry Labonte is on the pit lane and let's see what they do here one would assume four tires and fuel Michael Waltrip is in and here comes Jeff Gordon also Jeff Gordon and Michael Waltrip will pit four tires for Mayfield how crucial this is to get in and out very quick is now the race leader with all of these pit stops cycling around there is Johnny the Cheerios for Taurus now the race leader as he was at lap 52 and at lap 75 and many many other times today Johnny Benson has a cylinder out on the 26 car he's riding around the bottom of the racetrack nevertheless he is it showing the lead here all of this during pit stops. Here comes Ted Musgrave with a modified look going by. Mike Skinner will make a pit stop at lap 353. Caution! Caution! Kenny Irwin is in the wall in turn number two. Caution is on the speedway. I don't know where everybody's at. Go hard. The leader is Johnny Benson at the caution. Lap 354. Caution flag of the day for Kenny Irwin. Looked as though Jerry Nadeau and Ernie Irvin will both have to fall in behind Johnny Benson. There was a question as to who beat whom back to the stripe, but indeed, Johnny Benson being shown as the race leader and Jerry Nadeau will have to drop back in line along with Ernie Irvin, but that'll be handled routinely by NASCAR, and we're under caution. How about it? Wow, I mean, Jeremy, I'm just watching all these cars as they sort out everybody after the pit stops here. Jimmy Spencer is much in the battle now. He's showing in second place. Jimmy Spencer was one of the very first drivers to pit at lap 341. He's been out there for 14 laps already, and he is behind Johnny Benson on 
in the overall rundown. There is Jimmy Spencer. And Donnie Wingo and the guys gave him great cars at Daytona, but now Jimmy's going to come in again. Yeah, he had pitted earlier, and as a result, his tires had a few more laps on them than everybody else, so he wisely is coming in to put four fresh ones on under this caution flag. Donnie Wingo, the crew chief, changes the right front tires there. Sure don't see much of that anymore. Used to be no. the crew chiefs all went over the wall. Steve Burns is there with the Johnny Benson bunch. Hey, Eli, yeah, Johnny Benson ain't getting, yeah, four brand new tires, four good years on the Cheerios Taurus. Want to go down and double check on the, uh, the engine problem they may be having, but he's had a strong run here today. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. A four-tire pit stop for Rick Mass. Rick reported into Dave Sharpens here. His car is awesome on long runs, and they just dropped the jack. They just dropped the jack on the 75 car. Definitely losing some time here as they're trying to get the wheels back on. Boy, bad luck for Rick Mass when it rains and pours. That was good at Lynn Jarrett. And Dale Jarrett, of course, is the scoring that we've got back here, got back on the lead lap somehow, and he has come in to, uh, ch to change tires again. He didn't have very many tires on that, but he was at the tail end of the lead lap, if the scoring is correct, so he has nothing to lose anyway. He's the last car in the lead lap, so he's got four fresh good years. He is down and away. So caution for the fifth time. The hood is up. The hood is down as repairs continue on Johnny Benson's car here at the Rock within shouting distance of the finish. Getting set to go back to green here on TNN Motorsports. Kenny Irwin continues on, and here's what happened from the view that Bobby Labonte had. Into the wall. Yeah. Oh, oh, boy. Just does get by. But Kenny Irwin is okay. He's running in 28th. Excuse me, he is running in 32nd. Jerry Nadeau is running in 30th. The best running rookie right now is Steve Park in 15th position. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. He has led five times today. Most recently here, taking the lead at lap 357. Getting set to go green. Green flag is in the air. 33 laps from the finish. Fireworks. Now, folks, remember, the 24 is the leader. The cars ahead of him are on the tail end of the lead lap. Ernie Irvin on the tail end of the lead lap. You can see Rusty Wallace got by the 24 there of Gordon going down into right. turn three. There. Grabs the lead right there. Shot right through. Rusty Wallace shows the way, lap 361. And these cars are battling to stay in the lead lap. You can see Ernie Irvin there getting very sideways off turn two. He, along with the four, that orange machine for Bobby Hamilton. Here comes Gordon right back to the lead. A lot of traffic there, though. Whichever lane moves is going to be the lane to be in. You gotta go fast, but you have to have patience too. You start running too hard here and you get in the back of somebody and create your own problem. And you need to save those tires for the end of the race. If there's no caution flies, these are the tires that they'll have to finish on. Now remember the 40 car is a lap down right there to Coors Light Machine for Sterling Marlin. John Andretti in the 43, the SVP machine also a lap down. This is now, a lot of course by inches. A lot of traffic here. And what this is doing, when they're running side by side like that, you can see Bodine and so many others moving in for the fight. That's for the lead. Gordon wants it back, grabs it on the low side of the racetrack, and Rusty Wallace just gets in line ahead of Jeff Bodine. Oh, oh trouble, trouble. Ernie Irvin, Steve Park in front of Michael Walton, who takes out Sterling Marlin, being hit by others. Mike Skinner spins. Earnhardt, Earnhardt. Here comes Bobby Labonte with a hard hit back. on Skinner. Earnhardt was involved, too. The right rear of Earnhardt's car got a pretty good whack there coming out turn two. Terry Labonte gets his lap back. Hamilton gets his lap back. Jeff Gordon is the race leader under caution. I think Jeremy Mayfield got into that as well. Oh, Skinner's car is a mess. 
A multi-car incident, lap 365, and indeed Mayfield comes down pit road. There you see Michael Walsh of the Orange 21, Skinner in the blue and yellow number 31. Mayfield's car oh, badly poor damaged. That's it. Steve Burns? Yep, we're right here. Steve. I don't know what you can see from the left, but trust me, the right looks terrible. Well, I can see enough to know the hood's bowed up where it shouldn't be on this side of pit road. One, two, three, four, five guys on the right side of the tar of the car. There's smoke coming out underneath of it. Tough break. What a great run for young Jeremy Mayfield. Look at Michael Waltrip's car there. Front and rear damage. Let's take a look and see what happened here, fellas. Let's watch. Where does it start? Well, there it is. Ernie Irvin was high with Steve Park. Waltrip. There's Mayfield on the low side of the track. Yes. Completely out of the action there. He was on the flat part of the racetrack just and trying to skirt Skinner behind got Earnhardt. Hit. Yeah. Skinner came off the wall and Earnhardt was there. And oh. Bobby Labonte with a heck of a hit, too. Yep. A whole bunch of people who just had no place to go. I wonder what got Ernie and Park up there. I guess it just kind of ran out of racetrack. Well, they've been running so tight together at the front of the pack. This is getting toward the end of the race, and everybody's just trying to do the best they possibly can. You have that many cars and drivers that motivated, and oh, boy. Hutch Strickland in the eighth just got by. Sterling Marlin also was very, very cautious through there. Made it through. You see in the 40. Oh, he gets into Michael just a little bit there with the right front corner. Michael in the 21. Walchip has already gone to the garage. Watch Bobby Labonte. Oh, we just kind of panned away from it there. But <laughs> there's we'll another look. A lot of work on Jeremy Mayfield's car. What a heartbreaker there. Under caution at Rockingham. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Good Wrench Service Plus 400 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. At Napa, we keep America running. And by Chase Authentics, the authentic trackside apparel of NASCAR is now available at NASCAR specialty stores and leading department stores everywhere. Well, all of those skid marks there are as a result of this multi-car accident. Let's take a look from the in-car cameras. Ricky Craven's view of it all. And this will show us what starts. This has to show the whole thing. Parks on the outside. He and Ernie make contact right there. Into the wall on the outside goes both cars. Well, that was a great view of what transpired now from Mark Martin's angle. And another view from Jerry Nadeau. down and now watch Bobby Labonte's car here will ride with him <laughs> oh, oh, <at> the, <laughs> oh you can feel that Wix oh, you can feel that one coming man <laughs> and he had no, no chance no chance whatsoever there's Bill Elliott he's having a good day he's running in six with a new crew chief Joe Garoni and our friends at Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning, bring us a look at Joe Garoni, the new crew chief for Bill Elliott. It's hosted by Glenn Jarrett. Bill Elliott is one of the most successful drivers on the Winston Cup circuit. For 1998, Bill promoted Joe Garoni to the crew chief position while moving Mike Bean to chief operating officer of Bill Elliott Racing. And everybody's role has pretty much changed. Mike is still heavily involved with the race team and still probably does equally as much as he did at this point. But Joe, come on board. Joe's a good guy. Came from Rick Corelli, the truck series. Um, has done an excellent job motivating, putting people in place. And to basically just to help take some of the load off Mike and everything else we're trying to do. I hated leaving Rick. Rick and I had a great relationship and still do to this day and always will. But. It was time to move on. I, I really needed to learn more. And Mike and I had developed a relationship over the years. You know, you, you lean on each other and um, get support from each other. And that's how the situation works. I mean, we all work together as a team, and it, it works really well. Team cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. 
Rusty Wallace runs in second. Jeff Bodine third. Mark Martin fourth. Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer is fifth. Bill Elliott is sixth. Rick Mast continues on in seventh. Ahead of Dale Jarrett eighth. Terry Labonte ninth. Ricky Craven is tenth. That's your top ten right now as we work our way down towards the final few laps here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. The one advantage right now that 24 four car has over the entire field is he has open racetrack to run. The rest of them are having to contend with heavy traffic back in the pack. So Gordon right now is running the racetrack. Everybody else is running the competition. This is one. He's a two-time winner here. Won this race last spring. Rusty Wallace running behind him. Five times he's won here. Jeff Bodine in third spot. This is his 33rd try at Rockingham. Never won. He's been second. Eli, this is what I'm talking about. You see, right now, Dale Jarrett probably has as good a car as anybody out here, but he's hung up in this traffic in this fight to get back to the front right now, and he's really having a time of it. Riding with Ricky Craven in ninth. That's what they call close competition. Well like one more layer of paint that doesn't fit anymore. Mm -hmm. You were talking about Jeff Gordon. If he can well win this race, he would join Rusty Wallace, Kyle Petty, and Richard Petty as winners of consecutive good wrench races here at Rockingham. Looking awful good right now. About 378, just 15 to go. What a job his crew has done today of turning a car that wasn't fast into the leader. Seemed like every time Gordon went on pit road, every time he had a chance to have that crew lay their hands on it, it just got faster and faster. Ray Effertham looks on. Crew chief, coach, best friend of Jeff Gordon. They're pretty darn good crew chief. Mark Martin is making a run back to the front, guys. He's moving in on Bodine. You see Bodine up there in the seven car just in front as he's come off turn four right now. Mark Martin is driving this racetrack. He's using every inch of it to get maximum speed out of the car, but right behind him is Jimmy Spencer. And Mark Martin sure knows how to win here nine times in Bush Grand National Racing. He's a Winston Cup winner here as well. But his last top five here at Rockingham was back in 1995. That's for seventh place on your screen. Terry Labonte in the five has the inside against Dale Jarrett. That's for seventh. Raven right behind him there. We're riding with Ricky now. He's in ninth. Bobby Hamilton's 10th. Rick Mast 11th. Ward Burton is 12th. John Andretti is in 13th. Those 13 teams on the lead lap. If you're wondering if Jeremy Mayfield, he's being shown in 14th spot now. That was an interesting shot. Yeah. You could see that Ricky Craven was turning 8,500 down the front straightaway by the tachometer was there. Wow. Craven with that vibration earlier in the day, so out of sequence pit stops, and after having looked so good at the very beginning, running into mechanical problems, he has fought his way back. Boy, it almost looked like he hit the wall right there coming out of the corner. Fought himself back to the top 10th position he's in now. He's running the ninth spot. Meanwhile, third place, a great battle. Three wide, Spencer inside. Bodine in the middle, Mark Martin to the outside. Martin has a good run off the corner. Should be able to close Bodine out, coming off that corner side by side. You got Bill Elliott right behind them in sixth. Jeff Bodine, last top five here, was a fourth place finish in 1991. Been a while. Jimmy Spencer in the 23, that red and white machine. His best ever Rockingham finish was an eighth back in 1990. And this is his 18th time here in a NASCAR Winston Cup car. Car his hometown is from Ellerby, right down the road, literally right down the road from this racetrack. Got a lot of friends and fans here cheering on the 23. I don't think you can drive one in any harder than Jimmy Spencer just went into turn three. That just a second ago on the outside there, went in, made up some four car lengths. On Bodine, just getting in the corner. Got a great run off the corner again. There's Kenny Wallace, middle of your screen there to the inside, having just returned from the garage area. He's in 38th, trying to pick up a few more laps before this race is said and done. And by Whoa. making two laps, contact <laughs> Elliott and Bodine. <laughs> 
about gave me a heart attack. Yeah, I gave me one too. I thought they were both going to wreck. Look, Good if place. you don't yell like that, I'm going to put the back back on the seat here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fifth place on the screen. Gordon's lead is eight tenths of a second on Rusty Wallace. Good three wide battling middle of the field. You've got Jarrett, Perry Labonte there, Jeff Green, Ken Schrader. Raven, they're all looking for some running room. Raven fished tail for a little bit. He was very close to getting into loose shavings on the high side of the racetrack there. Ray Everdam talking to Walt Green, the NASCAR official there in the background, trying to point something out. What he's pointing out is that my guy's about a second and a third ahead of everybody else. Mike Skinner's gone to the garage. Kenny Wallace has gone back to the garage. You know, by Wallace coming out and running three laps, he is going to finish 38th instead of 39th. Might be a difference or something with season's end. Side of five laps to go, now four. I know what the concern is right now. Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 car is just about 15 car lengths ahead of Jeff Gordon. Rusty Wallace in second is just behind him. Interesting. Again, they're corporate teammates. to go. Matt, what was Ray Everham concerned about? Eli, he was concerned about the 12 car, not that the 12 car might intentionally block the 24, but he just wanted to relay to Walt Green if he could talk to the crew chief of the 12, Paul Andrews, and say, hey, look, we're coming. We'd appreciate some consideration. And clearly, Jeremy Mayfield has let him go right by. Plenty of room between them all. But that's heads up. I mean, Jeremy Mayfield's class act. He would never do anything like that. But it's smart of Ray Everham to let them know he, hey, he's on his way. Ray Everham leaves no detail unattended. They're coming to the white flag. Jimmy Howell has it in hand. The white is in the air. One more lap around. One mile now remaining for Jeff Gordon. He started fourth. This will be his third Rockingham win and his 30th career victory. Of those 30 victories, 22 have been on super speedways. And he has now won 28 of the last 100 Winston Cup races. Jeff Gordon wins at Rockingham. Rusty Wallace second. Third is Martin Spencer. Great battles all the way down to the stripe. Unofficially, Gordon Wallace, Martin Spencer, Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, Jarrett Labonte, and Craven in that order. High fives for the Rainbow Warriors. And can you imagine one guy winning 28 of the last 100 races? Matt Yoakum, that's remarkable. Boy, what a big day for the Rainbow Warriors, or patented day for the Rainbow Warriors. Battle all day, never give up, never refuse to lose. These guys, boy, what a great win. You gotta give a call to Michael Landis, too, the new spotter for the Rainbow Warriors. He took over today for Dave Tapman. What a big day for these guys. Ray Everham, these guys never gave up. A patented day for the Rainbow Warriors, Ray. Yeah, it was a pretty awesome day. You know, I want to thank God first because he walked with us today. And, uh, you know, just unbelievable. I don't know how better to say to refuse to lose than what these guys did today. It was awesome, awesome day. And I am so proud to be part of this team. You can't believe it. Well, it's hard to top those. An awesome day. Sentiments from Ray Everham. When we come back, we will head to victory lane along with the Rainbow Warriors. Jeff Gordon wins at Rockingham. We're back on TNN in a moment. Chevrolet wins. Fords finish in the next six positions, but there is one happy guy, Glenn Jarrett. And Jeff Gordon clouds out. He's going to get a kiss from Brooke first. And as usual, I'm not. <laughs> he's coming, he's coming. We've talked to him. Now, you told me wow. sitting there, Jeff, while we were waiting to get out, that you couldn't believe it. Why not? I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I, I mean, I guess because we fought the car so much in the early stages of the race, man, I was just trying to stay on the lead lap for most of the race. And to, to be here in Victor Lane, this is unbelievable. I, I want to thank God. I mean, he certainly was blessing me. Every time I got down and thought, you know, th this day is going to be a disaster, I, you know, he always came to me and said, don't worry, you know, it, it'll happen. And, uh, you know, I got to thank DuPont Automotive Fish and Chevrolet, man. This, 
the Chevrolet was tough on those four tourists today, and uh, we're pretty proud of it. And uh, I gotta thank Pepsi and Quaker State. It was an awesome day for the uh, DuPont Chevrolet and all the Rainbow Warriors. Did an incredible job in the pits. Well, congratulations again. Great day for the second year in a row. Jeff Gordon in victory lane for this race. Here's Steve Burns. And with Rusty Wallace, a second place finish after a fifth at Daytona. Boy, you guys are really running good. We're running good. I'm real happy with the team. The guys are doing a great job. I told everybody at Daytona on a scale of 1 to 10, the Taurus is about an 8 right now. It's a really good car. Uh, we're still working on it. Uh, this is the best start I've had ever. I come out of Daytona fifth and ran second, third all day long. And... Uh, second here and leading the points, and so that's pretty cool. And I got to keep this momentum going. But uh, like I thank all the sponsors: uh, Miller Brewing Company, a Goodyear, and Ford, and Mead, and Bosch, and Lennox Heating and Cooling. All the guys that sponsor us. Uh, a great effort for the number two car team, and everything's going good right now. Just got to keep this up. Thanks, Rusty. Let's go to Matt. Well, Mark Martin, a smile on the face. A good third place for you guys today. It was a great run for this race team. Uh, you know, Valvoline and Cummins and. And all our supporters, I think, can see that we're going to have a have a good race team. You know, we we had a lot of new guys on the team this year. We worked real hard at Daytona and kind of uh, broke our hearts when we broke the gear down there. But uh, uh, Jeff Burton helped me out here today. Uh, I've helped him out some at some other places, but uh, he helped me out with some setup things that kept me uh, in the hunt today, and I appreciate that. And uh, we had a we had a, a better a better setup than we've ever had here probably for Rockingham. So we were in uh, contention there at the end, but just not quite. Congratulations. Hey, I tell you what, uh, that 24 bunch they held back all weekend, stepped on the gas when they needed to go, and they still got it. I tell you, uh, they proved that today. Uh, they won that race and let the Fords lead all lead, let the new Taurus lead all the laps, and they stepped on the gas when it counted. Well, the Taurus has made a good showing today. Glenn Jarrett. And we're back in victory lane, Matt, with uh, winning crew chief Ray Everham. We're going to present, uh, man, how many of those you got? He's got a new house, folks, and one whole wall is paneled with these Miller Lite pit crew awards from, uh, from Miller Lite. C congratulations from TNN and from Miller Lite. You guys did a heck of a job in the pits today, Ray. Well, thanks. So actually, we got a wall at the shop because this is, is really all for all the guys, and they deserved it today. This is, uh, it's been an awesome win. I got to tell you, I've, you know, halfway through the race, I'd have said, no way, we'd have been happy with a top 10, then, then maybe a top five, but uh, finally hit a combination. And like I said, uh, you know, these guys really live, refuse to lose. And, and Jeff Gordon is an awesome race driver, and uh, he hung with us all day. No question about that. The team did him the favor, too. We're still in victory lane here. The celebrations continue. We'll be back with more coverage from post-race activities here at Rockingham right after this. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Winnebago Industries is the official motorhome of TNN. Just stop by your local Winnebago or Itasca dealer now and see the new models available. For more information on the Winnebago Motorsports team, please call 1-800-643-4892, extension 2. Well, let's take a look at how they came across the line. A Chevy ahead of that group of Fords. And on through, Terry Labonte, Bobby Hamilton. You talk about some finishes between Hamilton and Craven, guys. One one-thousandth of a second difference at the strike. And both overcame real obstacles to get there. Hamilton pitting on the backstretch, Craven with the early vibration, both with good finishes. Jerry Nadeau on down the line. Bobby Labonte and the fellows who were involved in the accident and had some mechanical problems throughout the day. And on back towards the 43rd place finisher, first out of the event, tough afternoon for Ricky Rudd. Great day, though, for Jeff Bodine. The season's looking up for him. Let's go down to Steve. Well, Jeff, it wasn't a victory. It was a fifth, but I'm sure it feels like a win. Well, it does. You know, we have a lot of new things with this team this year. Our new sponsors, Phillips, uh, WorldCom, uh, MCI, Lucent, Purvis Brothers Ford, old sponsors like LA West fans, you know, this is great for all of us to run this good. We had a real disappointing race last week. I had a top 10 car and, you know, we had a crash on pit road and we didn't finish well. So to come back here with no restricted plates, this is real racing here with a new car, a new tourist body. We hadn't even tested before we got here. We're really happy that all the folks down there in Atlanta uh, with uh, Phillips had something good to watch. It was fun, wasn't it? Glad you're in racing, aren't you? We're glad you're with us. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. That is Jeff Bodine, a very, very fine run for him here today, coming home in the fifth spot. We're back to wrap things up from The Rock. You're watching it all on TNN Motorsports, where you see more NASCAR racing than on any other network.
CNN Motorsports live coverage of the Goodwrench Service Plus 400 has been brought to you by Texaco. Texaco, a world of energy. By First Plus Financial. At First Plus, we're working first for you. And by Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. If you are a racer and you like games, check out TNN Motorsports Hardcore 4x4 for the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn system. It's in stores now, and you'll see fenders crunching, wheels busting, doors flying off, just like a normal day at the racetrack. Check it out, and if you'd like more information about Hardcore 4x4, just log on to TNN's website at www.country.com. Checking out the NASCAR Winston Cup points. There's Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt now in second spot as he goes for that record eighth NASCAR Winston Cup championship. But you see how consistency pays off for Rusty. Absolutely. He's having a great year right now. As he said, he's having his best ever start any time. And he has won a championship. But just behind him, these guys have momentum too. Dale Earnhardt, never count him out. And you know yourself, anything can happen in the uh, 31 race schedule. Now, what about the stories we began watching for you back at noon Eastern time from the back pits? Not a bad run for Dale Jarrett. A real good run. His crew did a great job for him, and as always, Jarrett was strong at the rock. As far as those who reversed their fortunes after missing Daytona, Jeff Green came home in 22nd position today. As for the Pontiac domination, they didn't win here today. Ward Burton, the highest finishing Pontiac, comes home in 11th. Mark Martin led the most laps today in finishing third he came home with 116 laps in the bank for him celebration week is coming up on TNN in the month of March it's high fives all around TNN celebrating its 15th anniversary all sorts of specials TNN's greatest moments you'll see thrilling motorsports clips in the past TNN celebration week March 7th to 14th right here on America's country home TNN March 10th will be an evening to remember on TNN. Take a look at the life of the late country music great Roger Miller. Kathy Matea, Trisha Yearwood, and Roy Clark, just a few of the celebrities that will be sharing the wit and the musical wisdom of the king of the road, the Roger Miller Remembered. Show Tuesday, March 10th at 9, here on TNN. And remember, stay tuned as soon as we move aside here on TNN Motorsports. Take a close-up look at the Open Wheel Series that races on some NASCAR tracks. Find out more about the Indy Racing League on this is IRL coming up as soon as we move aside here on TNN Motorsports. Big win today for Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace second, and Mark Martin, Jimmy Spencer, and Jeff Bodine, your top five. A big thank you to the guys who patrolled pit road today. Dale Jarrett, his brother Glenn Jarrett doing all the running up and down the pit lane, along with Steve Burns and Matt Yoakum, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergman alongside, I'm Eli Gold. Thanks for joining us here on TNN Motorsports as the Rainbow Warriors are back in victory lane. So long, everyone.